begin. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to the Fitchburg Planning Board November 22nd meeting. I do have a little statement to read at the beginning of our meeting for coordination. All meetings of the Fitchburg Planning Board are open to the public. This does not mean that the public partic participates in all aspects of the meeting. It simply means that the meeting itself, including all discussions and votes, is open for public view. If you wish to address the board regarding a public <laughs> hearing, please your please raise your hand and the board will acknowledge you at the appropriate time during the hearing. The board will also monitor any participants that are attending virtually for questions at the appropriate time. Virtual attendees are asked to use the raise hand function to be acknowledged. One, state your name and address. Two, <coughs> approach the center table and either stand or sit. This allows you to be seen and heard clearly by everyone in attendance. Three, the planning board requests that comments be limited to no more than five minutes in the interest of time. Please be advised that FATV is conducting audio and video recording of this meeting for public broadcast and I ask that anyone in the audience who is recording this meeting to please identify themselves for the record now by stating their name and address. No one has identified themselves. Go. All right. The first item on our agenda are approval not required plans for which we don't have any this evening. The second item on our agenda is a minor site plan reviews and special permit modifications for which we don't have any this evening. The third item are, is the public hearing segment. The first item on our agenda is a site plan review for special permit and site plan for Lorigan 106 East Street for a three family, which co was continued from our October 25th meeting. And Bill had sent me a note yesterday afternoon, yesterday morning, that they would like a continuation of the 106 East to next month. Okay. Mike, do you remember the East Street people or anyone, uh, the people in attendance? Um, I know obviously not in person, but. Are any of the panel, are any of the attendees virtually? Uh, any I'm East trying people? to see oh. the names. Uh, yeah. Cheryl, we'll get to, I see your hand raised, Cheryl. We'll, we'll get to Wilmot Street uh, in a few moments. Yeah, sorry. It looks a little bit different than usual, Paul. So, we yeah. Can't see the so, oh, yeah, yeah, because you're under an attendee. Um, oh, no, you're a panelist now. It's, so, it's, let's see. Andreas Romero, Silva Hughes, Goodrich, Tanner. None of them, I mean. Okay. Well, I guess if there's anybody okay. here for 106 East Street, if you identify yourselves, if you had any comment at this time, there's been a request to continue. I think it was only the Cuttings who lived right across the street. Yeah, Fran. Yeah. All right, so just if anyone is here, we'll, this will be till next month. We're just waiting on there engineer to do all the engineering so uh, he has requested a continuance right perfect make a motion to continue to our December meeting uh, oh did well before we take that vote did Bill say anything about how close they are did, did he impress um, upon you kind he, of? that he had a um, engineer on that we secure the services of an engineer but all engineers are pretty backed up now yep. you, you know Laura. okay so maybe before, I told Paul the only thing is before December, if, if we if we know he's not going to be ready for a few months, that we That's just fine. push it back. Yeah. But okay. Push it till December for now. Our December meeting, which is just the twenty seventh. Okay. December twenty seventh, Paul. So there's been a motion's been made. Is there a second? Second, second. that motion. Yeah. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. Continued December 27th. If you have used a snack, yes. yes, I will recuse from oh. that. All right. Our next item is a special permit for New View Communities for conversion of the first floor to residential at 470 Main Street. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for having me. 
So it's all the, I know we have some of our team is on virtually. I saw Steve on there, who else is it? Uh, so it should be Steve Cook, yeah. Russ Tanner, and Andreas I think are the three. Perfect, let me just get them up here. Um, I'll just hit the allow to talk and then whenever you think they want to. Uh, uh, Russ Tanner and Steve Cook, okay. Yeah, so they're, they're all too. prepared if you want to call on them at any point you, they can speak. And Andreas too? Yep, yep, perfect, great. Um, well, thanks for having me. I know we spoke about this project. We introduced some of it last, uh, I guess, last meeting. Um, also, before we do that, just want to thank you for the tip about the permit. Our permits have not expired on uh, Fitchburg Arts community, so uh, but thank you for helping us research that. So we're the owner of 470 Main Street, which, as you know, we converted to residential units back in 2008 and still has commercial space on the first floor. And now what we're doing uh, is proposing to convert the unused commercial and storage space that's at the back of the building into seven new units that will be facing Boulder Drive. They'll be on the ground level and the level up from there. I'm gonna pull up the site plan, Mark, so the lower yep. can, if you need to refer to anything. Right. Uh, so when we're completed, the building will have go from 31 to 38 residential units. Um, and the Main Street commercial space, which was formerly sort of where TD Bank was, will be reduced, and where New View is, will be reduced from 5,000, from uh, 13,000 square feet to about 5,000 square feet. Uh, the building will have seven great new residential units in the back, and the new commercial space will be reconfigured so that it will work well uh, on Main Street. So on the construction side, we'll be reconfiguring the rear of the, like I said, the first floor and the lower level in the back. Um, with revised floor plans, they'll have additional egress corridors, new exterior windows for the residential units. Uh, we'll demolish, there's a small extension, sort of you can picture where the bank is now, that will be uh, demolished. There'll be a stairway at the rear and we'll have minor changes to the rear site plan. And we'll upgrade all the MEP and life safety systems. Um, so. A couple just brief overview why we're doing it. So New is really committed to downtown, but like the rest of the world dealing with COVID, um, there's no use for our commercial space there. The bank left and it's uh, just been vacant. So adding seven new units to the building will help us address a need that's here uh, and um, allow us and, and convert space that isn't being used into something that'll be where there's a high demand for residential units. Uh, we're still very interested in activating Riverfront Park. Um, we helped the city just get a grant for that. And we'll also maintain the commercial space on Main Street. So the Main Street side will have two commercial units. One where uh, currently TD Bank is. Uh, we envision that Nuvi would move into there and then there'll be a smaller commercial space where Nuvi currently is that will you know, work in the current well, Mark, environment. Mark, if you look up at the screen right there, the smaller space you're talking about is this one down here on the bottom? Yes. In 900 and 908 square feet retail mm -hmm. office too, and then the main space you're gonna uh, occupy is about 4,000 square feet? Yes, that sounds about right. Okay. Uh, just to go through, and Andreas will be able to go all this through this stuff in, in better detail, but just the overview. So the existing units will remain the same. We'll have nine one-bedroom units and 22 two-bedroom units for the total of 31 units. The new units will be on the lower floor and on the first floor rear, so we'll add three one-bedroom units there. So we'll now have 12 one-bedroom units, and we'll have four two-bedroom units to total 29 two-bedroom units, so we'll have 38 uh, two-bedroom units in the building. Fair enough, mm -hmm. everybody clear? Mm -hmm. um, what will change is the income mix. Right now we have about 30% of the units, seven of them are section, sorry, that's not, the, the percentage isn't right. Seven of the units now are at 30% of the area median income, that will remain. We'll be converting the rest of the units. 60, 19 of those will be converted to 60% area median income, and 12 of them will be converted to workforce housing which can go up to 110% of the area median income, which is similar to the program that's at Moran Square. Uh, There's no market rate units. We would, well, the, there'd be no completely unrestricted units. The workforce housing would 
those rents are fairly comparable, mm -hmm. uh, but there would not be any unrestricted units. Mm -hmm. For parking, uh, we're really proposing to follow what we're doing now, which is to keep the parking in the two garages, and Andreas will be able to address that, um, all the details on that so I don't get it wrong. Uh, the site will look pretty much as it does now, um, except the back of the, uh, except for, as I said, that, the, that part where TD Bank is, that part of the building will come off. So I think that's the overview. I'm happy to take questions, or if not, I can turn it over to Andreas, who can sort of walk you through the plans or, or however you would like to proceed. I, I, I just had a, I, I, I mean, aside from some of the stuff that they'll get into, I just had a question. I want to clarify the whole what? parking thing. Are, are you, What's the that's, what? I'm going to ask for the breakdown again. Yeah, I, I have the, the stuff here from what's proposed on the memo that you have, which I assume is correct. It says you propose seven additional spaces on top of the 25th, you, 25 you already have. The weird number about the 25 is you're, you're required to carry more than 25. The letter from Brian Doty that was from 2005 or six said you were supposed to maintain lease agreements for 87 spaces. Now, I agree that number's way too high. We could reduce that as part of this. But why do you only have 25 right now? 26. 22. Uh, so the 88 was, they were reserved, uh, but we used whatever we needed. So those 25 are what we actually use. That's the number of right, cars. Right, right, right. But the, the, the letter from the city, as well as our permit, states that there was a minimum you had to maintain as part of a guarantee that you would always have them. The guarantee there is a, a lease agreement with the city. So the, the, the letter actually says, we agree that of these spaces, 46 will be reserved in the Putnam Street garage and that the monthly charge for 31 will be $25 per, per space. The other 16 will be $15. However those numbers worked out, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care about the dollar amount. It could be a dollar. The dollar amount doesn't matter. The concern is, the way we write those permits is there has to be there has to be a lease guarantee that you own those spaces because if for whatever reason and although it hasn't historically recently been a problem and we don't necessarily see it in the near future to be a problem as we start seeing ideally buildings like yours and the one we just the 16 units we did across the street and the four units we did down there and all of these add up they're all leasing spaces at these parking garages so they need to have an actual d definable lease space that guarantees those are tied to your project. So that if Putnam ever fills up, you can't say, well, we were gonna use those, but they're not available anymore. No, they have to be tied to your project. So you have to lease the amount of spaces that the permit requires. Okay, that's a new twist for us. Well, I guess. well that's what it says on the city of Fitchburg letter. It actually says you, you will, you'll agree to lease the spaces 40, this is from the treasurer, 46 of which will be $25 a month and 16 of which will be $15 a month. Like I said, the dollar amount doesn't matter. It can be a dollar. I don't care what the dollar amount is. So I guess the way we've interpreted the letter and the way it's been actually played out in practice, um, and this is something we're open to, you know, making it new and improved, uh, let's just leave it that way, is that those we saw that is that we had the right to have 88 spaces at those parking at those figures if we needed them but if we didn't need them we were not going to lease the spaces just to pay the city for a vacant hmm. space i i suppose the alternative is that this letter and and i don't know if the treasurer has that authority that this letter it's gonna to have to be revised anyway. Whatever number, like I said, those numbers are too, I think those numbers, the, the 87 is, I don't even know where that number came from. It's kind of a, it's a crazy high number. It doesn't need to be that high. So we can revise the numbers similar to what we've done with other projects, which is about one per unit. Commercial space doesn't require any offsite parking anymore with our new zoning ordinance. So, um, you know, if we did one per unit, that's, what is it, 33 and seven, 40? 40, 40? 38. 38 and seven? 45? Oh, have, we, we have a total, total of 38 new okay. units. So, so 31 and 38. Seven. Yeah. So there's 31 now, seven new. So if we did 38 spaces and we, you know, if, if you get the letter to revise, revise to say the city of Fitcher guarantees those spaces will always be reserved for 470 Main and you only pay for, the city only requires you to pay for 25, that's fine. That's not what this letter says, though. Okay, I guess I. 
Well, uh, we, we've been reading it the way that I interpreted it. That's how we've been doing it, is that there, those spots are reserved for us, and I guess the way I would, uh, you know, maybe, maybe one way to think about it is when the rubber meets the road is if the city ever did lease all the spaces, then we would need to step up and actually lease the spaces. So I would think that would be a fair interpretation. Right, but the, the only guarantee we have of that is that you actually lease the spaces. That's that's all I'm saying. There's no guarantee that you that you or a future developer realize that at some point we're approaching capacity, and you I jump guess, onto the I spaces. Maybe a consideration would be if the if they can get a letter from the treasurer's office or from yeah, it's going to have to be updated anyway. Yes, so. it needs it needs to be updated. Actually, there was another subsequent paragraph that said they would enter in some type of a formal agreement that was kind of like preliminary. Yeah, it says it says we understand parties will be. Uh, wanted to enter in a more formal agreement prior to right. occupancy, you must have. Is there some sort of formal lease agreement, or was this kind of the extent of it? Really, we just called the city, and I, there's so many empty spaces there. You know, oftentimes we would be the, right. we were, I think, far and away the largest user of the garage. And um, the problem is, every project that we do on well, Main Street now does this. I think of whether or so not. We've had three just recently. So well, we're open to improving yeah. and, and, yes. and making it. Uh, I, I think one, I'm sorry. I was going to say, let's see what we can get also from the city regarding the parking and how the reservation system works mm -hmm. to see whether or not they just can commit to certain projects for reservation. And then when it starts, to, do you like recertify every year just to make sure that that's, you know, applicable, so that you, they're, they're still available? Otherwise, you, you know, you have to. And again, my, I guarantee you, I'm, I know that they're available. Commitment. The no. problem isn't today. The yeah. problem is our goal is to plan, and our goal is to make sure that, that we don't have these problems in the future. So, it, you know, it's a problem that can e be easily solved now by either getting a written assurance from the city that they will always be tied to 470 Main, or the alternative is you, you do what this says, and it says you reserve them at this rate. And that reserves them by reserving them at that rate. That, that's the way I read that letter. But. Right, and I guess I saw it as a car rental reserve, okay. right? You're, you're reserving them. I have the right to get the car at such and such when I show up. Okay. And what you're pointing out, I think using my analogy, is oftentimes you go to the car rental place and they don't have the car. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, we want to make sure that we don't have it's, that. It's, it's an easily solvable problem. Yep. It's just, it was just a formality. Like I said, I, I think that we've, we've treated it differently because we've been so used to it, now, especially the Mark Garage, because, you know, um, the Harper Furniture Building's using that. Um, 155 Main's supposed to be using that if that ever gets developed. 20 Snow is supposed to use, uh, 20 Main or whatever it is is supposed to use that if ever, North, if that ever gets developed. So we're adding all of these large scale projects. Now granted, that's the Mark Garage, but Mark gave us a list of these are all the spaces. I, it's, it, we just have to talk to whoever, if, you know, again, if it's the treasurer or clerk or DPW or. More to come. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I did speak to the treasurer ahead of time and she thought that we wouldn't have any. Um, we we can work out the legal side. I'll, I don't know if Russ or Steve or anything have, have uh, or Andreas have anything to add, but she doesn't think it's a problem for us to do that. And certainly, we all agreed that there's Perfect. no reason for us to have 88 spaces. We're not going to use. Yeah, those yeah. Spaces. Do you remember where that number came from? 87 just seems so crazy. It might have been two per unit. That's more than two per unit. That's two. Well, two per unit plus commercial, I guess, because. I, I think I did the math. It was like 2.7 per unit or something like that. Mm -hmm. What was the what was the breakdown of what's there currently for the 31 units? How many bedrooms? Nine, nine one bedroom, 22 nine. two bedroom. Nine one. Nine right. We're adding three one bedrooms and four two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nine one bedrooms and yep. 22 two bedrooms. Got it. Perfect. Yeah, it's fine. Just. You know, work it out with whoever exactly. whoever's appropriate to work it out with. I'm I'm sure it'll get solved. Well, I'd like to make sure that we, when we deliberate, um, that we can just change the parking for the whole thing. It's being added, like added mm -hmm. to, but we'll just look at mm -hmm. setting the new parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, do you want to talk about what we think is adequate now? That's why I do want to know what the current one was to see what the um, what the waving would. Oh, exactly you how many would math? be waving? Do the math. 22 times 1.5 is 33. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 40. Oh, yeah. 22 times 1.5 is 33. Nine ten, 33, 33 and 9. 42, 42 spaces would be by code.
and that's for the existing. That's 22 plus nine. What? <laughs> I know we're going, to, we're going to 38 now. So <laughs> okay. So then it's so then it's three more one bedrooms. That's 45, and then. Um, so it's adding another four, nine. Uh, Ten more 51. spaces with the two bedrooms. Was, no six. It was six, adding sorry. nine. It was adding nine, so it would be what fifty-one. And if we went down to one per unit, it brings it to thirty-eight. Yeah, 50, 51 was the right number by according to the, okay. the bylaw. Let's take a look at that. Did you have a number in mind what you thought was for parking? What you what you thought yes. was adequate for your project? I think the number that we had proposed, um, I'm looking at Russ and Steve a little bit, is yep. the 25 plus the seven is what we I think had proposed. I mean, at a minimum, it should be one per unit. Um, I think that's the baseline. I think that's the starting point because that's what we do with all projects. We don't have any projects. Well, I don't think that are. Yes, there are actually some because they were actually close to. A municipal parking well, on North one, Street. The only one that I think would be was 155. So Main. it was a uh, ratio. So I wanted to look up what the ratio was. This right. is because on Main Street, you mm -hmm. could potentially use that. Yeah. I, I mean, just saying. Um, I'll look at it. <laughs> is that Steve? May, may, I, like may Steve. I comment, Mr. Yes. Chairman? Madam Chairman? Can you just speak up, Steve? Yep. Russ. Oh, Russ, can you just speak up? Yeah. You're very, very muffled. All right. Sorry. Is that a little better? A little bit. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I want to point out a couple things. One is that uh, you have the benefit, we all have the benefit from a history of usage here with the current 31 units. The Thank owner uh, offers free parking to every uh, tenant in the building, um, and the utilization with that free parking has been 20, is 22 right now. I, I, I'm, my understanding is it's very, very little over the years from that 22. So I think that's an indication that of, of the demand at this point that suggests that it's um, not necessarily, I would hope you'd agree, it's not necessary to require that they uh, lease one unit, one space per unit at any time. I understand you're talking about making sure it's reserved, mm -hmm. but hopefully the requirement for what they actually lease will, can be less. As long as it's reserved, Russ, just yeah. have to prove that to us. Good. And um, what we said in our, as we said in our narrative, that we have 22 spaces being used by, for residential purposes, and we were proposing to add seven to that to get to the 29. Um, just to get the math clear, that's what we were, what we were saying there. The, there are a few spaces that have been used by staff, as I understand it, but I, I don't think that that's the same thing that's uh, that that's a casual commercial use how many staff spaces do you guys use mark that's a really interesting question because with hybrid work right you know originally td bank used all those spaces so now with hybrid work uh, we've been using um, we haven't had to use any spaces in the garage we've just been using the commercial spaces in the back of the building for our staff mm -hmm. so um, so that's where we are now and i think we'll so you, you, you obviously you have enough spaces back there just in the, your spaces available. I'm looking. So you own these spaces too, the ones behind Putnam. We own this. Up there. Uh, on the yes, we those are the spaces that are ours. Okay, one through nine, one and through then nine. all the way up to fifteen over here. Yes. Okay. So so all the numbered spaces on this plan are so yeah you got plenty you got plenty of spaces especially because you're the primary commercial occupant. Correct. And we had, um, as you may recall, Paul, I think you had worked on this, was that I think one of, you know, originally we had no spaces here for tenants, and so we have one of those spaces of the three vertical is for a drop-off for tenants. They can drop off their groceries, and <clears throat> one I think was for a maintenance person, and one was, you know, somebody else needed to stop, you know, just go park right at the office. Because mm -hmm. uh, we had no flexibility with the bank where they needed all those other spaces for themselves. Yeah, so, so we you would got, certainly you maintain the drop-off, which I know I see tenants using it <laughs> all the time. 
um, uh, again, it's a little bit weird now in the high, I'm, I'm referring pre, uh, pre-pandemic, so t- uh, tenants would definitely use that spot and we would certainly- How many did you, that. how many employees did you have pre-pandemic come to the office? Uh, we had about uh, between, it's a little hard, uh, I would say about a dozen. Okay. And now, you know, people are coming at different times and oh. um, that was one of the things actually we had spoke to the clerk about. Okay, let me ask you an easy question. How many do you employ? Uh, right now we're about 20, but a bunch of those are part-time. Yeah, and I'm sure you have well, maintenance staff and things like that that aren't in the building. Actually, so if you were counting that, there would be three people <laughs> okay. from Wingate too that use the spaces. Uh, again, they're a little bit hybrid also. They're not always in our office. Sometimes they're in another office, so they don't use the spaces every day. Okay. So up to three on the main, on the property management side and ourselves. Yep. I suppose yep. it could be, yeah. I got you. I got you. I mean, either way, there's, there's adequate parking for the commercial component in the back. That's the only reason why I asked the question. Yes. That, that's no problem. No, I'm not adverse to just ensuring that uh, there's an adequate reserved amount that's just checked on. It doesn't even have to be at the two parking garages. Whatever municipal or area is available, you're able to obtain them. Right, I think what Russ was pointing out is for us to lease spaces that we're not using, Mm -hmm. that's the part that we, is hard for us to do. They're not inexpensive. Again, I think that that it was just a technicality. I just, you just need something in writing from the city that says, yes, those spaces belong to 470 Main. And if the city says in order for that to happen, you have to pay for them, then that's what has to happen. That's all I'm saying. Um, You know, I, I, I read Brian's note different. And, and that's the reason why I brought this up and the reason why I mentioned it at the last hearing. Um, I don't know, I, I was under the impression when we did it for the other ones, Mart required them to physically pay for the spaces, but. Uh, that could be, I think, at that time in particular, I think it was nobody would have read the letter that way because there were hundreds, right. I don't know how many spaces there are and none of them were being used. Right. And so it, the city didn't feel like yes. it was giving us anything. It, it, it wasn't a hard thing for the city to yep. do, and we would have never think, agreed to I think pay a, for 88 spaces. Yeah, I, th- uh, I think there's a balance to be maintained because yeah. um, it is becoming a little bit more active, definitely more active downtown. So we also don't want unavailable spaces that aren't being used <laughs> either. I, I can tell you the, the Ward 2 so. councilor had called me the other day about this project in particular. And his one comment was, they have to have off-street parking just like everyone else. Now, the, the number wasn't talked about, but I do agree with that, not to that extreme, but I do agree with that, that that's the reason why we're having this conversation. You need to make sure that, yes, we understand you have tons today, but you have to have them in perpetuity. Um, uh, great, we're in complete agreement on that. Yeah. And Perfect. we also feel like it's a market thing too. You should know every tenant who leases a space with us, We. In the lease, we give them mm-hmm. one parking spot that we pay for. That's great. Perfect. Got it. And we could talk about the number when we get to deliberation. I think it should be one per unit um, in, in the event well, that In the meantime, things change. we do have some other uh, smart growth or other areas where there is a ratio that's been reduced because of the proximity of parking garages. Mm-hmm. So we can also look at that mm-hmm. yep. too. So I'm just trying, stumbling, I'm trying, trying to find it at the moment. <laughs> Mike, do you know do you know what you're talking about? In the smart growth district. Yeah, yeah you know we we d- did it for um, a project on North Street as well as I think Day Street with reducing the amount of parking. We did it for Hopper Furniture as well. Yes, so like Hopper where furniture. it was back next door. Point yeah. something. Yep. <laughs> oh, what the actual? It was pretty close to. So I'm just saying, if I think we it was could, under 1.0, it is. It is. Well, it's it is saying. under. Saying it was point something is under point one. Two, so what, what was the number like that? that we could potentially apply? Just want to look at that to be consistent. Okay, I I can't get access to the. Like, oh, the hit me a little con- control F and search not. the ordinance. Right. <laughs> I got the I got the state the model bylaw. If, okay, if that we'll, was part be, we'll of be looking into that. Please continue. <laughs> yep. I think I'm going to turn it over at this point to have, and I think it's Andreas is going to take over for the team to just walk you through the plans, okay. so that I don't get it wrong. <laughs> we have an architect who really knows what he's talking about. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Andreas evening. Romero here from Davis Square Architects. Um, hope everyone can hear me fine. 
Yep. Um, I am. Uh, I will walk through. I won't won't add anything to parking at this point. Um, I'll walk through sort of the overall concept, the layout at the first floor and the lower level, and a little bit about the rear uh, of the building, the site area at the rear of the building. Um, do you want to probably switch over to him, Andreas? Do you want can do you want control of this, or do you want what do you want to do? You want me to just you have a tell me what page you want up, or how do you want to do it? Uh, sure. I if if I can have control, uh, we could do it that way. Um, so, um, or I can just direct you to to flip to whatever. Travis, can you make Andreas pages. a panelist? There you go. You should be. Let me, hold on one second. You should be good now. Um, yeah, you're a panelist now, so you should you should be able to share your screen. So I don't know if you've used this feature before, but if you go to the top, um, you should have a share button. Sh uh, share your screen and then click the screen you want to share. <laughs> I have not seen that before. Okay, I was <laughs> muted for a second there. Um, I was assuming that I could just sort of flip through the uh, the PDF that you had displayed on the screen. Um, but do, if, do, you, uh, do you just want do you just want me to pull it up on my screen? Is that what you're saying? That that might be the easiest right. at this point. I can, yeah, do, I, can, I, can do, I can do that. Great. All right. Do you want to start? Do you want to start and on just on the the site plan, the the rear of the the lot there? I would I would suggest let's start with the interior, and if we okay. could go to the first floor, that would be the plan A one hundred and one. Great. Um, so uh, I think I think at this point you you understand the concept. Uh, we are changing uh, space that's currently uh, commercial space and sort of, I'll call it back of house space to the residential. There's some uh, kind of maintenance space on the lower level. Uh, it's, it's really underused at this point. So we are converting that space to the residential units um, at the first floor and at the lower level. Um, I think we've already sort of run through the, uh, the unit count. Uh, it's a total of seven new units, four at the rear of the first floor and three at the rear of the lower <laughs> level. And um, we're, we're sort of limited in the, the viable residential space here by the amount of uh, sunlight that we have at the back of the building. Um, you can see that's sort of the only space that is available for, for windows uh, for residential units. Um, which is why we are proposing to remove the existing stair tower that's at the back of the building. You can kind of see that dashed in on the left-hand side of the plan. Uh, it's labeled area stair demolition. Um, that stair only provides maintenance access to mechanical systems up on the roof. Uh, as well as an exit to the commercial space on the first floor. Um, we are providing circulation uh, with an additional stair that we're proposing at the interior. It's up at the top of the plan, kind of in the middle of the building exactly. Um, and we would provide interior access to the rooftop uh, just for maintenance staff. That's kind of the left uh, stare of those two you see at the top of the plan. Um, so uh, residential units, uh, four of them here at the first floor, and um, we would reconfigure the circulation a little bit. You can see the corridor here uh, running sort of top to bottom of the plan that provides um, both egress and circulation for the commercial space here, the retail one office space, uh, as well as those units uh, down connecting to the lower level. Um, the commercial spaces, um, we think th this is sort of a nice viable commercial layout with, uh, with two commercial spaces, uh, the larger office one space. And then the office two space is a little bit flexible. Um, we're showing some tenant storage behind that. 
if uh, if there's a need, I think the office two space could expand a little bit. Uh, so there's uh, there's a little bit of flexibility built into this layout, and. Uh, the residential units, uh, they would be accessed uh, through the front of the building, through the existing, there's a nice uh, large residential entry or entry vestibule that accesses both the commercial and the residential spaces. Uh, and we would use that as well. So these units will be accessed the same as the existing units at the first floor. Um, if uh, if we could go down to the lower level, so it's uh, it's oh. back one page. It's Plan A, one hundred. Um, at this level, uh, it's overall kind of the same concept. Uh, three new residential units at the rear of the building, and um, you can see as well the the demo of that stair tower here also increases the um, the the window wall area that we have at the back of the building, uh, which really opens up um, uh, sort of uh, two, two new uh, units at the back of the, the building here. Um, layout wise uh, for the residential units, um, we're trying to sort of maximize the, the residential units here, but at the same time, uh, give them a nice amount of natural light. Uh, so kind of making them as, as deep as we can without making them too deep uh, and, and not have sort of good natural light within the spaces. Um, we, we do have some internal bedrooms in the two bedroom units here. You can see that at the bottom unit here. Uh, yeah, thanks where the pointer is. Um, and we're using a um, sort of, a, we're calling it a clerestory window, which is to say there's a nice big window in that bedroom that's sort of raised uh, above the floor, kind of um, sort of uh, a top of the door height. And that provides natural light for that interior bedroom there. And that, that does meet sanitary code requirements. Um, the, the glazing there for that bedroom just needs to be a certain percentage, 8%, I believe, of the square footage of that bedroom. Um, and this is an approach that we've used on other projects and that is used often in, in older buildings where there's sort of deep uh, residential units. Um, you know, some of the, the mill building renovations use this strategy pretty well. Um, the back of the building is a southern exposure, so we think there's, with uh, with some generous windows that we're planning to add, there's going to be good natural light within these spaces uh, throughout the day. And um, in addition, um, at the back of the building, uh, let's move to the site plan, so it's up one page. Um, you can see in the hatched area here, that's sort of the area that we would be reconfiguring the regained space from the demo of the stair tower, uh, which allows us to really open up the site, the sort of small plaza that's there. Uh, Andreas, can I ask you a quick question about that? Sure. Because I was just curious. I noticed in your memo it said demolishing the stair tower, which provided access to the roof of 480 Main. Does that do they need it to access the roof? Do they need to access the roof of 40 Main, or it's just an old thing that's no longer necessary? That's no longer necessary. Um, that stair was originally built to provide egress from an external stair that was at the upper floors of 470. Um, so before the previous renovations, there was actually an, an exterior fire stair and this stair tower provided the continuation for that exterior fire stair. Uh, that's no longer there. All of the egress is provided internally. So that, that pretty substantial stair that's currently at the back there, it's, it's really not provide, it's not serving any egress function. Uh, it doesn't provide any required uh, roof access other than just maintenance. Okay. Um, so uh, back to the site here, um, there you'll see a little bit of a stair that's kind of uh, floating in that uh, plaza area there. That is providing access to an existing uh, boiler room that's kind of straddling both of those buildings. 
a uh, little bit of a funky condition. Uh, so we'll have sort of a little bit of an area way there that will hopefully kind of fully enclose with, with plantings um, to kind of, you know, make it, uh, make it disappear as much as possible and, and keep it safe. And uh, around that, we would be excavating a little bit just to bring the grade level down to provide those nice generous windows for the lower level, uh, the new lower level units that you kind of see faintly in that plan. Um, I, I think that that's kind of uh, kind of our, our layout in, in a nutshell. Um, happy to go into more detail uh, on specifics of, of the plans, um, but I think best I'll, I'll open it up to, to questions. Does any board member have any questions this time? No, no I'm good. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing. I'll open up to the public if anybody in the audience has any comments or questions regarding this project. Councillor? So, um, my name is Andy Van Hasig. I'm the ward councillor for Ward 4, uh, which includes this area. Um, also a former board member of Newview Communities. I'm a big supporter of what they do. Uh, so it's not really easy for me to come up here and say this is a bad project. This is not good. These aren't good apartments. The, uh, almost all the bedrooms lack exterior windows. Um, you see that in loft style apartments sometimes, but this is not really that. I think it's it kind of mentioned, but I should point out two of the units on the ground, the lower level are below grade. Uh, right now, there's in, in the plans, there's a step down, and you look up at the windows. There's talk to excavate, dig out, and then to increase the window size, but they're still below grade. So these are not particularly great apartments. Um, I think also you look at the density that, uh, according to the zoning ordinance, uh, currently 77,500 square feet of land area is required. We have about well, 42, 462. So the pointing board can waive that. If we go up to 38 units, 95,000 square feet is required. So substantially higher. And the planning board is allowed to waive that if it's beneficial to the neighborhood that meets the purposes of the zoning ordinance, but I'm not sure this does. These aren't great ap apartments. And um, also it's important to consider the impact on the neighborhood. And I did some digging, I just want to give you some information. Look at the housing inventory downtown. Um, there's a lot of income restricted housing, and part of this project is going to result in all of the units being restricted. Um, and we're going to lose the only significant sized market rate housing development we have downtown. And if you look, the downtown area has about 3% of the city's population, it has about 5% of the city's housing units, and it has 40% of the city's subsidized housing. That's a big chunk. And if you look at the proportion of the housing units, overall the city, about 9% of the city's housing units are uh, restricted as, as low income. In the downtown area, it's 79%. And if we follow this change, it'll go up to 83%. So this will have a, a significant impact. And I'm a supporter of affordable housing. I think people of all incomes need a place to live. We should work to provide that as a society but it's bad planning to put it all in the same neighborhood. And that's what we're doing in downtown. And if we're trying to revitalize downtown and to stimulate growth, we can't segregate it so only poor people live in downtown. It's bad planning. And I think the move to eliminate the market rate units here and make this another income restricted property is not good for downtown, it's not good for the neighborhood. We need a mix of incomes, we need housing for everybody especially if you want to support other redevelopment of downtown, this is a step backwards. This is a couple of steps backwards. It hurts it. Um, so that's why I'm here. I just, I don't think this is a good project. I'm a big supporter of Newview. I appreciate all they've done in the city and continue to do. One of their biggest cheerleaders for most of their projects, but this isn't a good one. This is not good for the city, and it's not, they're not particularly good apartments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else 
in the audience, either remotely, you can use the raise your hand function. Um, Russ has his hand raised. I assume if you want to speak, he just will. Russ, I don't know if you raised it earlier and I didn't notice it, or did you have something you wanted to? Sorry, that, that was left over from the parking kind Oh, of okay, no problem. I just wanted to make sure we didn't miss, yeah. miss you on Thank something. You. No. Thank um, you. Now, just out of curiosity, Mark, and I, I, I had asked a similar question to what Andy had just brought up. Um, is, I mean, with the existing units, I know obviously they were built with funding that required them to be affordable, but why do the new units have to be? Can you say that again? So the existing units, the 470 main when it was approved, I know some or most of them had to be affordable because you got financing that required them to be. Why did the new units have to be? Um, I, I guess the answer is is that we can't finance, you know, we can't finance it another way. We have lost the, you know, if you get down to sort of dollars and cents, we had a bank that was paying Mark, you know, paying for 8,000 square feet, a very large amount of square footage. The deal was designed for them to be paying that, and, you know, they had, it was a triple net lease, so they were paying some cam charges and utility charges. And uh, to make the building, we have to replace that hole uh, of all that income that disappeared. And we've spent two years trying to figure out something, and this was the best plan that we could Right, but my question is, why can they not be? Why can't they be market rate? We can't find the financing to do it market rate to undergo. Did you try and find the financing to do a market rate? Yes. Okay. So you explored that possibility. Yes. We. The easiest thing for us to do would have been to convert the, you know, just raise the rents and all, all that stuff, and that would have far and away been the easiest thing for us to do. This was not the easiest thing for us to do. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was a way for us to... Right, right, but I think you're mishearing me. I'm not asking you to change the rents on the existing units. The, just the new units you're building, why can't those be market rate? Uh, because we couldn't raise the financing to do that. All right, so you'll have to... So you have... In order to make that viable at all, they have to be affordable housing units. Correct. It's, yes, for that... For the project to work, the only possible financing I can... Russ may be able to answer this more clearly than I am, but mm -hmm. th the only possible way to do this is to use some sort of subsidy to get this done. Um, and so we've, you know, looked at the mass housing, workforce housing as a good subsidy to be able to... What, what, happens, if, what happens if this doesn't go through? Does your project become non-viable as it stands today? Uh, I'll, I'll step in if you, if you want, Mark. Sure. The short answer is yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we've been, we don't know what to do about that hole, but I'll have Russ expand on that. Um, well, yeah, I, I, that's what I was going to do. Um, the, the, the driving factor here is the vacant commercial space and, and the big hole, as Mark puts it, that was left when TD Bank departed. And um, while I think we have a very, come up with a very good use for that space and a way to make the remaining commercial space more viable, what we are what we need to do first and foremost is to refinance the building in a way that will add those units, pay for those units, and put the building on a much more solid, stable financial footing going forward. So um, the the market rate units basically do not pay for themselves in this situation. So, uh, but we're fortunate enough to understand how to use the, the system for raising capital for affordable and restricted units. So we're bringing in the new units, we're raising money through tax credits and one of the um, programs for mass housing to subsidize the moderate income units. And that raises enough capital to, um, to allow us to have a greatly reduced private debt and to have the, the capital to build the new units and refresh the, the finishes and systems in the building and maintain a range of uh, income levels and rent levels in the building. So uh, we're trying to take advantage of the best parts of the affordable housing system to maintain a range that's actually very similar to the people who live there right now. 
and um, all the way up to what is basically market rate, people paying um, you know, fourteen to sixteen hundred dollars a month, something like that. Um, we'll, we'll be very close to the market, and the people who live there now, um, vast majority of them, will still qualify and hopefully be able to stay. Thank you. What's the of the seven new units? What's the square footage for the, each of the units? Andreas, can you help us on the square footage of the units? I think it's sure. Uh, the square footage uh, varies. It's it's sort of generally somewhere between. Um, I think it's around uh, around a thousand from I think it's 600 to about a thousand square so feet per unit. I see 607, 683, 930. Um, yeah, I think the, the slightly smaller ones are on the lower level. 941, 933, 1069, 1037. And which of the, how, um, of the seven units, which were the ones designated as, I would say, subterranean or without yep if you go down to the the lower level it's the um this this layout here the the two units at the top there those are the ones that are currently sort of um uh below grade and um we're definitely aware of the challenges there and um that is the reason for the uh lowering the grade at the exterior there and um, we, we have looked at the grades there, and by lowering the grade, we can get some full height windows in those units. So, uh, so we're, we're, we're definitely aware of those challenges. And, you know, we think that with, uh, with lowering the grade and getting some full size windows in there, that we can, we can deal with those issues and provide some, some quality units here. So that's two, was it two units? Exactly, yes. the, the two units at the at the top of this plan. In that rear bedroom, in the third unit is the one with he was talking about the light, the the light above the transom light mm -hmm. above the door and mm -hmm. whatever. Because that one's that rear bedroom's got no natural light other than that light that they're creating over that interior wall. Okay, that's correct. I, I you know the the unfortunate part is what I ever since I had first heard about this and Tom and I had talked about this quite a few months ago. Um, the issue I had in principle was the first floor, was Main Street, because it's, I, I, I certainly understand your particular instance and your particular scenario. There are, um, you have a, a relatively deep commercial space that makes it difficult to, in the current environment, rent. Um, so I, I get why you're sectioning off that back portion. My concern, and I, I, I had told, like I said, I had told our prior community development coordinator that the biggest issue that, that, that we didn't want to create, I didn't want to create with an approval for this is creating an environment where it becomes, you know, it becomes an accepted practice of first, first floor unit owners first floor business owners to subdivide and create residential spaces on the first floor, which was never the intention of our bylaw, which is why it's required, why you can only do it through special permit. If this were on the second floor, you could do it by right now with just the parking issue. And the reason for that is the, the planning department and community development and even the counselors and mayor when they, when we did the new bylaw was, they thought that it wasn't appropriate to have units on the first floor on Main Street. So I, I, that was the biggest hurdle that I've had to get over in this whole thing of, you know, it, it's, I, I, honestly, I didn't even think about, you know, what the counselor had said about the, the, the below grade units on the, on the Boulder Drive side. Um, but my whole thought process has been to get over this allowing residential units on the first floor. Um, I thought I was getting closer to getting there and then the more every time I think about it I think of you know we had just done um, the Woolworth building um, right next door um, and it's I think it's going to be a church or whatever it was they came to us and they only had to come to us for parking because that's an allowed use by right but had it not been them had it been a developer the concern there is they say okay uh, f you know 470 main and uh, you know habitual city partner in Newview was allowed to do it so now we want to do it we want 500 square foot, a 5,000 square foot commercial space in the front and 15,000 square feet of residential units in the back. Um, that's, a, that's a problematic idea from a planning standpoint, creating precedent and creating this precedent 
while I do understand there are some mitigating factors with your particular business, it's it's still a hard pill to swallow. It's it's it, it, it's it, it's it, it's not a precedent you want to set on Main Street, and I don't think I, I would find it hard to believe anyone in the city. Uh, leadership would think the same thing too. That aside from New View, that we would want any other business to do this. So, I, I don't know. It's just something to think about. Well, I guess I would say that on the Main Street side, we kept it all commercial. We're right. doing that, and these units. But they are very small spaces. Can you We're say only that keeping again? Keeping twelve thousand square feet or ten? No, not even eight thousand square feet of commercial space. I mean, that's a really small, when you're talking about how big's your building, 50, 60,000 square feet? I mean, it's a huge building and you're creating, you know, 5% of the building is now going to be commercial? 10% maybe? I mean, it definitely is being reduced because we can't use, there's no use for the, you know, the way the building is configured, there's no use for the commercial space there. And I was going to point out that I feel like these units in the back of the building would not be very good mm -hmm. commercial, uh, you know, they're not street frontage, they're mm -hmm. tucked away in the back, they're not very good uh, commercial uh, mm -hmm. space back there, um, as no. opposed to being right on the main street or as, you know, some of the other buildings where they're right on the, right on the Boulder Drive or, or something like that. Yeah, so, so I, I was way off on the numbers. You're not even 5,000 square feet of commercial space that we're mm -hmm. maintaining. Your rental office, your, the space you were talking about um, utilizing would be 3,800 square feet, and then the retail office space that fronts on Main Street would be about 1,000 square feet, so you're talking 4,000 square feet, not including the common hallway and corridor uh, area, although there is that, the office flex space, the 740 square feet behind the, the rental office, which I suppose, if it stays with the commercial component, could be made into one larger, deeper unit. And again, I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that you don't have an example where this is possible. I'm just saying these are the things we have to consider. These are the things, it, 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 no matter what, it's not a good precedent to set. We have to decide, is this an odd enough scenario where it makes sense? That, that's, that's, the, that's the conversation we're having, and that's the conversation we have to have, at least as a board. I'm having a hard time envisioning what the back of the building is gonna look like. Do you have any rendering? Do we have a, I, I can pull up this, I mean the rear doesn't change, I can pull up the street scene, the only thing that changes is that stairwell. Um, it doesn't look very habitable, you know, that? as far as. We, we do not have, a, this is Andreas, the architect. Um, we do not have any renderings, and the elevation that we have uh, currently is, is very schematic. But um, if, if that's a concern, we're happy to, to develop the rear of the building more and present some renderings that give an idea of, of how that would work. Oh, is, this, is this the weird one where you can't pull up the street scene on Boulder so Drive? if you go to Boulder Drive no, and right, then right. do the street view oh, from you, there. Oh, like, I've got it up go. on my computer, but you I'm go. just like, Here it is. Where, like. Yep. Like I'm trying to picture where you're gonna dig in and put yeah, windows they're, and. They're, they're, they're down, mm -hmm. the spaces are here, correct? So where's the staircase? Correct, those are the spaces. And you can see the windows there on the. That's the entry right there at yeah. where the TD bank sign is. Um, we, we do have an elevation uh, here. Can you show that, Andreas? There you go. Up. Right there, right, right there. Um, right so there. We, just, we, we, are yeah. we are introducing residential windows in the back here where it's completely blank before. And so now we're at least giving it a little bit of life there with That's residential exactly. windows. I think if uh, if you look at the street view there, I think the at the sort of right hand side, there's a little bit of a planted plaza there. Mm -hmm. That level would kind of continue over to the left hand side where that stair tower is currently located. So the general concept is that the sort of the, the grade level and the plantings and the plaza that's on the right hand would continue over to the left hand side and that that would allow those uh, those units to have the generous windows that we'd so, like to get. So this there. corner right here where my cursor is, that's where that deep bedroom is where we were talking about that transom window? Yes. Okay. 
So that so one of the units is here and goes straight back, and then the other two are you know here, well wherever here and to here. the left to the left of the of the door. Yeah. The okay. On this side. Right on this side yep. of the door. Yeah. That's right. And so I think you, if I may, I think you could see from that where you're looking before that uh, I think it's unfair to call these basement units. They are a little bit below grade, probably two feet. I'm guessing here about two feet below grade. Um, and uh, by, by dropping the grade, uh, the soil level a little bit there, um, where there's a currently a nice patio, we're able to give them full height windows. Mark, oh, geez. Well, Wrong button. it's an interesting project uh, that you propose uh, to the board, but just a quick question. What would be the downside to Newview if this project was simply put on hold? You didn't do it. And maybe, maybe uh, three years down the road, there's so much going on right now on Main Street, maybe commercial uh, space is going to spring back. And all of a sudden, that space is going to become very desirable. So my question is, what would be the downside of just holding off to new view? I, I mean, I guess if I had a guarantee that in three years we'd be able to rent the commercial space, you know. Well, you don't know. <laughs> uh, right. So the issue is, I, I think the downside is that right now we're, uh, you know, we're having to, we've had to deal with the bank having left. We still have to pay the debt. Um, the building, the whole deal was structured to have a bank in that lowest level, um, you know, in that commercial space there. That's how, that's what this deal was. It was designed as a, what's called a new market tax credit deal. Um, we did a complicated transaction with the bank and it was, the whole thing was designed on them being there. I think if Newview, if that's not there, um, it's a real financial problem for us because we still have to pay the debt um, and there's no income coming in from that space. So if we could have just... Was there not a long-term lease agreement with TD? Not to get too far into your finances, but if that was such an important anchor to your business plan, why wouldn't you have had a long-term lease agreement with them? Well, we did have a long-term lease agreement. They were there for, you know, 12 years or whatever it was, but they're from Canada and yeah. they don't, you know, they... You know, there's when we started this project, yeah. there were seven banks on Main Street. Yeah, right. Now there are, you know, in four bank headquarters. Uh, the building we're standing in now was Bank of America. Bank of America gave the bank back to the city. Fidelity across the street gave the bank to Fitchburg State University. TD didn't give us anything. They just mm -hmm. said, pay your debt. We don't care. <laughs> we're leaving. Uh, yeah. Too bad. Oh, man. Um, you know, Workers Credit Union has... They still have a branch. Rollstone doesn't even have a branch anymore. Um, so the banking industry left. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't know that I uh, had the foresight in whatever year that was to say that the bank industry was going to leave, but that's what caused the, that's what caused the issue here. Um, certainly if we could just raise the rents or do something simple, mm -hmm. you know, we've spent two years trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. The reason we're here is because we can't uh, figure out a way to make the building work uh, and replace that income that was coming in from the from the bank. We think these are really strong units. It is true some of them are a little bit, you know, I wouldn't call them basement units at all. I think they're, you know, when you're in our training room, that area right now, it's full of light compared to the rest of our office. It's certainly the brightest spot. Um, the rest of our offices are all very dark. Uh, you know, the commercial space there isn't great because the building is so long and deep and there's nothing on either side of it. Um, so it's a difficult space to, it worked great for a bank, uh, but it's a difficult space to, uh, to use, even when we were uh, talking to other entities that were interested in leasing the space, they were all concerned about how do you get the light into the back. So I guess if there were super strong, uh, if if I may uh, augment that, Mark, sure, Russ. Um, the I, I would ask the the board members and and others there to to think a little bit about that TD Bank space if you've ever been in it. It's um, it's really what I call white elephant space uh, along Main Street. It looks kind of nice because they've got some nice windows. You can see the bank tellers. But as you head towards the back, it's occupied by the vault, 
a very large vault in you know, the safe deposit box areas. And then this, um, I, we believe it was a server farm back in the days when people had server farms for their, their um, banks. Uh, there's no windows. It's a completely problematic space for anyone to lease. So it's, it, I, I, um, to, the, to the board members, I would say that what we're trying to do here is to preserve viable commercial spaces on Main Street. Um, we spent quite a bit of time looking at this and how to make them, downsize them to be attractive, viable spaces. And I think we've done that. If we could please go to that first floor plan for a second. Uh, uh, there you go. Right there, yep. so you'll, you'll see what, we're, what we've left is the good commercial space, leasable. New View intends to take the larger one, but uh, you know, for itself for a good while. But I would hope in the future that that would be viable and we could hopefully keep it always active space for the main street. And then the small space, the, the lower piece there, you know, that, that could be um, um, a little um, uh, office for, for a, a home mortgage assistance corporation or a ice cream shop if someone wants to do that. It could be any number of uh, retail or small services in a small space that can be rented very cheaply. But we are using this plan of converting to residential units as a way of cr also creating very good, viable commercial spaces, which will help the building and Main Street. Okay. I can see that perspective as well. And Thank you. Again, I guess aside from market rate, or affordable housing, it's housing. Um, and it's continuing, it'd be continuing of the housing that's currently there versus establishing. We just approved a project, I think 16 units of market rate housing, a separate project as a, as a completely different, pro you know, new project. This is just your, I know, understand you're trying to add to your, our, um, what you already have. What's your, what's your breakdown, what's your breakdown, just out of curiosity, uh, is it the same breakdown for, um, you were talking about percent per AMI for the current, you're just mirroring that with the new ones, or what's your current breakdown with, with unit you restricting? Mean existing, you mean of current residents? Yeah, what's you, the current unit, what's, what's, yes. the, what's, what's the restrictions you have on the current units? Well, the um, eight units are restricted currently to uh, low-income occupants. Uh, seven of which have Section 8, one of, oddly, one of which doesn't. And then the other units are um, unrestricted. Wait a second, and you have so, unrestricted units there now that you're going yes. to restrict after this? Uh, yes. That's correct. Why? So we, we are bringing that in because by, by, by coming forward with a plan to restrict units and keep their rent stable, we're able to access resources from Mass Housing and the Department, State Department of Housing that allow us to finance the new units and to refinance the building. So we have market rate units in this building right now that are no longer going to be market rate after if we approve this. Well, as, as I pointed out earlier on, we've got, we're using housing programs that reach to the market in Fitchburg. What's called in Massachusetts, the mass housing calls. But was that statement was that statement accurate? Yeah. Yes. You have market rate units That's now right. that will. The the reason why I bring this up too is, and and I've never when we talk about affordable units, it's it's obviously it's outside of our control. But I I telling you this because you've been a partner with the city. I, I always was under the impression that one of the purposes of this project and and projects on Main Street in general are to create as much market rate housing as we can. And it seems like you're kind of shifting your mission. I, I'm not shifting my mission. I'm trying to, I, I don't know how to deal with the fact that we had a bank. You had eight banks on Main Street. You have one now and our, the bank left. This deal was all designed around having that commercial tenant there. The tenant left. That's the, that's what's causing the issues. Um, you know, we, we went into it. It was a, it was a partnership to try something, uh, and once the bank left, that's the that's what's keeping that's what makes us the, the, the debt supportable on the project. Um, so without that bank, we can't without that tenant there, and we spent two years trying to lease to the tenant, so we're trying to replace that income. So that's what the seven units is doing is replacing that income and 
improving the commercial space so that we can find a new commercial tenant, whether it's New View or somebody else that can actually rent the space that's there. Okay. Does anybody, before we get into that, do we have any department feedbacks? Unless uh, Nick or Jeff at DBW have something. Um, Nick, you still with us? Uh, yeah, hold on. Hey, could you hear me? We can. Yep. Yep. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, I think I had submitted some written comments back uh, a few weeks ago on this one, Mike. I'm not sure oh, if it was via email or if it was a, a written memo, but um, the comments really centered around the, the parking lot outside just because um, that's typically what, what we're most concerned about. Um, less the inside and more the outside stuff. So I noticed that the, the survey base map that was on the site plan um, was a slightly different configuration than what actually exists today based on the, the main boulder to a conversion project. Um, so there's a few curb cuts that changed. There's some sidewalk work that happened. Um, so the, the comments really focused around just making sure that the applicant was aware that the conditions out there had changed and they were taking that into account with their proposed site design. Okay. Yes, we are aware of that. Yep. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Any other department feedback? Mm -mm. Any board comment on this project? Can also consider of, of need more thought on the pro on it as well to to um, also continue. I'm not ready to vote on it because we need examine either parking further and or. Yeah, I gotta. I mean, I gotta. Down. I gotta have a little more thought about this. I mean, it's it. it, it, it the precedent issue is the primary one, it, it, and 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 again, I've gone back and forth so many times. Um, and well, there's a couple of components. First is it's housing and housing on Main Street. And then is housing on Main Street on the first floor, mm -hmm. regardless of its market rate or affordable or restricted housing. That's like a second component. First is I would say you look at whether or not, it, how, is it appropriate to have housing in that location and what the impact is or would be. And then looking, then looking at okay, then what happens? Uh, um, then deliberate that piece about well, what's affordable and market rate, and does that make sense in this situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I do agree in with the vice chair that one of the issues that kind of bothers me a little bit is first of all, I think the project as it looks looks great, and I think you're the keeping the commercial space in the front. For a, t a couple of small businesses makes a lot of sense. Uh, the project will certainly help you get over a hump, which is kind of nice. The thing that really is a, a stickler for me is the fact that it is, it is a precedent setting project. And when, when you present something like this to the board, you put the board in a kind of a precarious position because we would love to approve of the project as is, but someone down the line, like a the vice chair mentioned the Woolworths building. Someone down the line is going to come in front of us and say, we'd like to do the same thing. They did it. So as much as I'd like to approve the project as is, I have a lot of reservations with it. And uh, I also agree with the councilor that, you know, of course we'd love to see some market rate housing. That's where we, we should be going. And uh, I understand the reasons behind it, Mark. The financing, everything, and everything, but I mean that handout that we just got from the councilor—it really is kind of telling of where the city is going and where we should be going. So I've got a, I've got a lot of things to think about myself on the project. Anybody else? A Lynn or? Well, I think I think what's been said. Um, I definitely need more time to think about the pros and cons of, of this particular project and 
what it would bring to Main Street, but also some of the, the negatives that are associated with it. And I guess this is beyond this, but I'm just wondering how many spaces are still available in the MBTA garage, the Mart garage? Do we, and that's, this is something for another, for another meeting, but how, with, with all of the requirements and with the people parking there also to take the commuter rail, how many spaces are still available? We have, we, we have a recent one that Tom sent at some point. I have it in my email. That includes but Mark. Okay. This is, just to be clear, this one's not, I think you know, this is not, this, they're not using the Mark garage anyway. No, I would, th this, that was just a question that yeah. when we were talking about it, I was like, I park in that garage. It's not a big garage. And if everyone's going to be parking from every building down there, where is everybody going to go? It's a, so it's a good question, Alain. I, I, yeah. I think, Mike, I don't know if you can, if you know where that exists, but that we did get a somewhat recently got something from them within the last year or two about a, we can check. Yeah, about yeah. a list of all their mm. available spaces. So, like I said, that was beyond this, but I just, while well, I remembered it, so. Definitely a good point. We should keep track of that. Goodness, where is it? Where's the... Hi, everybody. Go ahead, um, Alex. Thank you, Paula. I, just like everyone else here, I think there's too many moving factors to make a decision tonight. I think we're going to need a little more time. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, I, I, you know, I want to talk to some other, um, some other um, people in the city as well as some property owners downtown that I know as far as, you know, what they think about the direction of a project like this and how it's going to impact the rest of downtown. Um, I just want to do my homework before we commit to something. Is that fair enough? Did the applicant have any questions of us? Uh, nope, I don't think at this time. I guess we'll, um, I guess what's the, so do we just uh, come back, do you advise we come back next month? Is that what we're saying to do? Yeah, yeah, so we would just, it's a normal continuance that we would do for any project, is, just just to make sure that we, we, we have all the information we need and is there before any, we take a vote. And is there anything the board can mention to the applicant that they'd like to see? That would help in their decision making. Oh, I just have one week. thought: is the pro is the project viable without doing the first floor, the ground level floor, just doing the floor that's uh, on street level? I, I think we'll take it under advisement and go check. I think my answer. I uh, so that's what I would. I would. We'll go back. We'll sharpen our pencil. We'll see if we can do anything about it. But I would say, at first glance, I think the answer is. I think we need those, yeah. you know, we need that extra income to make the project mm -hmm. work. Um, that's the, uh, so that's my. Yeah, those ground floor units bother me a little bit in the fact that you, know, you have these windows that are right there at ground level and the, the likelihood of someone maybe trying to break in or break a window, it's, it's just kind of a little bit of an issue with me. You, have, you must have exterior cameras in the back of the building. Yes, we have exterior cameras, and I would say we have a lot of, you know, many, <laughs> almost every single one of our buildings has ground floor units or similar units, mm -hmm. uh, including throughout Fitchburg. So we have many, many units. You know, most places the ground floor is residential. So I don't, from the security standpoint, I, I don't think that's an issue, and I think it's it's so far tucked away in back, you know. That's part of the issue. <laughs> it's, it's tucked away. It's kind of, you can't see it that well. So there might be something going on there that, you know, is a little suspicious at some point. I guess I, just, just if you can, between now and then, I agree with Pete. Just double check, you know, camera locations. Or you can at least mention to us, yeah, there'll be cameras at such and such, you know, looking at those areas down on the back towards the, you know, towards the back of the building. We certainly have cameras there now, and I expect, uh, I don't, Andreas, maybe I'll know the answer for sure, but we'll probably, you know, all this technology is changing so fast that we would, I assume, just upgrade the cameras and put in a better system. Right. The cameras are not that uh, expensive. We would, okay. I don't think the door is changing that much, um, and no. I'm pretty sure we have coverage for sort of that whole back area anyhow. 
What's the, can you tell me the range of the of the rents presently? The range presently. Yes, I know um, you've got you know, eight restricted and twenty three unrestricted. But what's the? I know I know it varies between the one and the two bedrooms. Yep. Russ, do you have the range yes. presently of yes. what we're renting the units for? Uh, the current you know, the, the current unrestricted rents have a, a pretty wide range to them. You know, they vary in size and, and, and amenities, um, but they're they're from about a thousand dollars, or maybe even nine fifty for the least expensive ones, to um, about fifteen hundred for the the twos on the top level. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, the the program we're proposing will will um, allow all or nearly all of our residents to remain there. They will, will they will allow them to remain there. So if yes. you like, you mentioned the, they would uh, be restricted, at, you know, potentially with fi due to financing. So you'd still be able will, to. But it meets. It will meet. We have a fairly good understanding of the income levels of our residents, and the, the programs we're using will allow them to remain there. That's what I'm trying to say. It, it matches. It matches their profile largely. Okay, I'm just trying to. Words, I'm the just income to... levels that the new program charges are higher than what our tenants are there now in the unrestricted units. Okay. So the workforce housing incomes and levels are above what most of our tenants are now. It's not dependent on the the tenant that's there now. You'll be able to still rent the space out at that particular rate. If you change tenant, could you say that again? It's not dependent on the t on the existing tenant. It's just the space. So if yes. they change the tenant, the rate still would not change. Uh, well, we we um, there's two things going on. Pardon me. Um, the the current tenants have income levels that, um, with maybe a couple exceptions, don't exceed the programs we're talking about. I want the board to understand that. So we're not changing the kind of the income levels of the people who will live there. Um, as Mark pointed out, we actually will probably need to raise the rents on some of these units, which is you know normal rents are going up. And um, and so yeah, if if rents turn over, if the leases turn over to new people, they would be paying somewhat higher rents than people are paying there now for some of the units. Um, others, as I noticed, as I said, we sort of have three tiers. Others would probably stay just about as they are. Okay. I'm just trying to understand that because we mentioned that they would be re restricted due to um, financing. So you take the, say it was cut in half from the 1000 or 1500 and it's defeating the purpose of adding the additional units when you have to cut your existing rents. No, no, I should, it, no, I, no it's not that dramatic. Okay. It, it's nowhere near that. It, it will. They will largely say stay. It will stay very similar, both okay. the people, the income profile of the people who live in this building, and the rent levels will stay largely similar. Okay. And I guess just addressing one of the issues here about sort of the affordability that I think has come up. You know, one of the things that Newview has done, and I think many of the gateway cities have come together, is to say, what do you do in a city where the market rents? won't support the construction that needs to be done, which is exactly the situation that we're in now, right? And so the first thing that we lobbied for as a community development corporation was the program that ended up being HDIP, HDIP funding. Uh, so that's one avenue to go. That program is not quite flexible enough to do what we needed to do when you the way the state designed that program, it's not a good fit for this building, and it, it works somewhat, but it's not quite what we needed. So we asked the state to go back to the drawing board again and say, how can we create more equity in gateway cities? How can we have income levels rising so that they're not all at the 60% level? And from that, that's what we came up with, the Mass Housing Workforce Program. So that provides a subsidy that's deeper uh, Russ may correct me if I'm wrong, but it's different from the HDIP funding because there's certain many communities within the Commonwealth, particularly outside of Boston, that need this type of higher income housing, which is exactly what this mass housing, workforce housing is designed to do. It's not completely unrestricted. We understand that. Uh, but it's a stepping stone to get there so that we can have more of a range of incomes 
So it's not just at 60% of the area median income or whatever other the programs are, but it's designed to help gateway communities bridge so that the rents do go up enough that eventually straight market rate housing can be built. And that's essentially what the, you know, that's why we lobbied for the program. That's why we pushed for that program was to have that. We're doing the same thing, not completely, doing the same thing on the home ownership side. So Mass Housing just came up with the Mass Dreams program. It's a way for residents of gateway cities where there's a mismatch between the housing and the market rate to get a subsidy that works in a gateway city and that subsidy will burn off so that eventually the person will have a full, you know, there won't be any restriction left on that home ownership, on that home ownership unit. That program doesn't apply in Boston, and it, uh, but it is designed for gateway cities. So I think that the program that we're using now, which didn't exist uh, in 2008, is directly designed to address the concerns that the board is raising. We're, we want to have that income diversification, and this is one way to get us there when the market rents themselves, particularly in a building like this that has so many difficulties with that conversion process of, uh, because of the way the commercial space works, because of the way the windows works, this is exactly what this program was designed to do. Uh, so I think we are being very sensitive to the, you know, to what Fitchburg is doing and what many other gateway cities are doing to try to diversify that income downtown and make sure it's not just all, it is income restricted for sure, but it's designed to be, to create a range of incomes. And uh, that's what the program's designed to do. And this is a good way for Thank you. us to do it. We think it adds housing units, which is in demand for now. and. Uh, allows us to take care of, as Russ said, sort of a white elephant of a commercial space that just, it, you know, it isn't, I, I don't know who's going to use that space downtown. Um, we had it on the market for two years and nobody was interested in it. It's very, very big, doesn't have windows. There's so many other more attractive spaces downtown um, and in other places. Uh, that this was sort of the best solution that we could come up with. And I think, Pete, to answer your question, it would be really difficult for New View for us not to go forward with the project. I don't know how we're gonna, we have the debt. I don't, we have to pay that debt. Uh, I don't have an answer for you other than it would be very difficult for us to do that. And um, it's been a real problem for us for a couple of years ever since the bank left mm -hmm. okay. without really giving us, you know, they. We didn't get the same deal that Fidelity gave or even that Bank of America gave. Uh, you know, we just pay your debt. Thank you for the explanation. Sure. Thank you for your time this evening. I do, just quickly, if you want, uh, Nick had forwarded his comments that he, they're, they're, they're short, I'll read them quickly. He just formed, he had comments that you probably already heard because he forwarded for the Economic Development Review Board meeting whenever it was a month ago, uh, three weeks ago. It says, uh, water and sewer connections should be investigated to ensure they're adequate for the proposed use. Um, if the building is to be sprinkled, which I presume it already is, a separate fire service may be required if it doesn't already exist. Roof drains must be separated from sanitary service. Water and sewer connection fees will apply. Utility work done within the roadway must be performed by a bonded contractor. The sidewalk and curb cut configuration along the property boundary changed with the main boulder two-way conversion. Some paving has been done as well. New pavement typically has a five-year excavation moratorium. The site plan should be updated to reflect these conditions and this should be factored into the parking layout and site access. I don't know that you have any changes along the frontage anyway, but um, anyway. Mm -hmm. The city's planning extensive work in this area over the next five years, including water main replacement and combined sewer, any road work, any sidewalk work will need to conform to city standards. Tree grades shown on the site plan should be placed on private property and should be maintained by the property owner. Um, so if you don't have that, I, we can forward it, Mike can forward it or whatever, but I think most of them are kind of just FYIs, so. Yeah, I think we're taking care of all that stuff. Most, you know, we're taking care of most of that stuff already as sort of part of the plan and mm -hmm. we'll be. Great. Okay, so we'll. So we have. What, so when's the next the meeting? Was Mike December twenty seventh? Twenty seventh. Do you really December twenty seventh? Is that really our date? I probably yeah. won't be here. 
Anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, make a motion we to continue to our December meeting. Talk about it at some point tonight to see okay. if you're going to have enough bodies here. Motion's been made with a second to continue to our December meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. The, we'll talk. The, the, I, I don't know if people can do different dates, but we'll, we'll talk. We'll, the, we'll, we'll get, talk about We'll let you know, every, obviously, yeah. if the date changes. Have to change. Okay, great. Thank Four. you. Thanks, Appreciate Mark. your time. Thanks for the comments. For okay, motion to reopen. I thought you abstained from that one. No, I did. So, but I do live in Fitchburg. Yes, I'm a resident. Uh, Laura O'Kane. I yep. um, I am involved in Newview as well. Yep. And I just wanted to mention that I understand the issue with precedent, but Newview has certainly set quite a track record as being a, an exemplary city partner. Um, and the way those units are set back, they're not right on Boulder Drive. They could be treated in a, with more screening or, but they, this building in particular could support first floor use in, on the ba in the back. I, it, it is a case by case basis. But again, I do want to reiterate the partnership that New View set, shared with the city. And you can go buy any one of their properties and they are in really good condition. They're well kept. So uh, it will only be a bonus, I believe. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Hold on. Next on our agenda, special permit and site plan review. Silva, 8 Wilmont Street for a two-family dwelling. All right, hold on one second. Let me get this up here. A million windows open. Hold on. Uh, so probably, I assume you want this plan, the utility plan? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, my name is Dave Sadowski. I'm the principal of DJ and Associates, and I'm here representing Mr. Silva on this project. Uh, we were the company that put together the utility plan that shows how the uh, proposed okay. duplex would tie into the city utilities. Uh, gas line, water line, um, sewer line, and showing the separation distances that are required. It's, it's a proposed two-family dwelling uh, it has four off-street parking spots, not 88, but it's got four. And um, it's got an area for snow storage. I think it meets the site plan requirements. It shows a 16-foot curb cut uh, to get into the area. Um, access in the front, access in the back. One of the sticking points, I believe, some of this lot is in the business zone because it's a long, it's got, a, it, it was subdivided from 93 Lunenburg, and Lunenburg Street is a, in the business, uh, even though this is going to be a residence, I guess a residence isn't allowed in the business unless you come forward with a special permit. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm correct, maybe I'm not correct. Mm -hmm. um, the owner himself actually filled out the paperwork for the special permit, then he asked me to represent him and come in here. I know everything about the site plan. We were not the um, land surveyors either that subdivided the property. That was done by the, pr the uh, previous or, or the owner of 93. Okay. So I, I tried to uh, lay out as much as I could, but um, I also was involved with 63 Beach Street. And over there, there was four different utilities that needed to be tied in. And the utility tie-ins I show conform to the city standards as well as mass DOT highway standards. Mm -hmm. And that's what they basically use whenever they work on a road. I know Beach Street was very, very severe. This one does have a good uh, slope to it too, but Beach was really... Um, it was a challenge. It, it, it's a pretty flat lot. I was out there. Part of, yeah. part of the, the, I guess, one of the first things that came up was I was looking at your elevation drawings, which I'll pull up here, and, um, or whoever drew the elevation drawings, um, and, and they have a walkout basement in the back. There's only about, uh, it's maybe three or four feet at most front to back on this that, site. That elevation drawing is incorrect. That's the one that was used at 63 Beach Street 
But okay. The, uh, so there's not the, going to be a walkout basement. No. Place. What the owner is trying to show is this, and he says that in his um, in his filing that there's going to be a bulkhead in the back instead of a walkout basement. Uh, I didn't see that. I saw here it says Eight Wilmot Street on this drawing. So okay. All right. That so okay because the 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 concern was the site. We didn't want the site work that would be necessary to create a walkout basement there being done, because you'd have to move a lot of material. There isn't one proposed there either. Um, basically, he used the same drawings. It's going to be the same building as he put at 863 Beach. He's going to be using here at 8 Wilmont, okay. except for the walkout basement. So you are, you are correct in that it, the, actually the entire parcel is in the neighborhood business district, so it's not residence. It's a butts residency, but it the whole parcel is in the business district. So yes, it does require the special permit. But residency, I can see though that all the, uh, more, the setbacks are more than appropriate though for residency. The minimum lot size is the 7,500 square feet. That is the minimum lot size. Typically, as I believe it's like 15 foot side setbacks and you've got close to 24. Yeah, 23 there. and a half on yeah. each side. Mm -hmm. 35 in the front and 21 in the rear. So, I'll have to say, we try to, um, with the housing, that it should kind of conform to what's there already on the street to some degree, so it doesn't look to, um, out of place. The setback is really far set back, and I guess more appropriate for the parking would be on the side of, like, shifting the house, just even like a foot or so in one direction so that you could put um, parking two by two. The, the parking oh, will look out of place. The yeah. parking I mean, lot's really a no-go. It can't like look like that. It's right ridiculous. in front of the house like that. It should um, be on the, on the side as a traditional you can You can... The site seems to be able to accommodate. Yeah, you yeah. can do it wide enough for two spaces, and you can do two tandem, so two by two, either on the right or the left side of the house. Okay. Um, I mean, there's nothing... I don't think you, you'd be hard-pressed to find a, a site in the city of Fitchburg that has parking that looks like that. Okay. It looks funny. It's very odd. So, uh, what? Through the chair, if I could um, sure. speak. Certainly. Um, the reason it was 16 foot wide was so that the car could drive straight out instead of back out onto the street. Yeah. Um, when you do tandems or do whatever, you're going to be backing straight out onto the street. Mm. With this configuration, you can actually back out of the space. With 16 feet, you can turn your car around and come out with the nose. So a car could be coming in and a car could be coming out at the same time. That's the reason for the configuration. No. I I, I think I appreciate the uh, explanation for that, but in keeping with, we really don't want just here's a parking lot in front of the house right. scenario. And that's fine. I mean, I was I I was instructed. We do want off street parking. I was parking instructed now, to do this <laughs> so that the cars could drive out onto the road instead of backing out onto the road. So I they mean, are normally I would just stack them one. It's a lot. It's a lot less payment. It's a lot less cost to the developer to put two spaces tandem and two spaces tandem and first floor gets one side and second floor gets the other. So our, you know, and then there would no one have to get woke up at three in the morning, you gotta move your car, I gotta go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Under, understood, but we still wanted to kind of fall in with the neighborhood. Oh, that would be fine. In that degree, and, and then in that regard, you could pull the house a little bit forward too. I understand the setback, if you've got like, you know, there's a right away of almost like 10 feet, and I then would, you've got the setback beyond that. For so a point it's of reference, like, I would like, like when you feet. modify this plan to show the, so the abutter on the right, who I know is on here and wants to speak, and she will, will yeah. she will eventually. But I, I would like to see where her house is on her site in proportion to where yours is, as far as how close to her, the property line she is, how f close to the property frontage she is. That should show on the plan as well. Okay. Just so we see the setback to the property line from what Have you had a conversation with the abutter on the, of the one up the hill from this property? Again, I'm just the engineer. Okay. It's just something I think I'd like to find out if whoever's proposing this project has actually had a conversation with the abutter. I think that's extremely important if you want to, you know, try to put a home in this lot. And uh, I think you have to work with the abutter if this project even goes anywhere to satisfy some of her, uh, the concerns of the property owner. I mean, there might be, there might be an issue with a, a privacy fence. There might be uh, an issue with a row of Aravides that they would like. So you have to get involved with the property owner to make sure you satisfy the concerns of the property owner. Mm. The, the, the second thing that bothers me a little bit with this plan 
is uh, uh, I'm looking at a letter from the owner of, of 12 Wilmot, and uh, they're complaining about parking on the street already. And they're complaining about trucks being there uh, on the street, and they're complaining about uh, tow trucks being on the street. Is that 93 Lunenburg that they belong to? It has to be. Our, they, don't, they don't own 93. We don't even own. They we don't even. They we don't even own this lot. All right, this so, is all subject to. So if it doesn't get approved, we're not buying it. Well, no, that's not true. I saw the deed was recorded. Oh, was it? Yeah, they already bought it. They bought it in October. So, getting back to my concern, you have a you're proposing a, a two-family home here uh, on Wilmont Street that has very, very limited parking on the street. It's, it's a hill. It's a hill, and three-bedroom units with the possibility of there being three cars in those units. That would not be a stretch at all. So you're providing parking for two cars per unit when there very easily could be three cars per unit or, or, or more, depending upon what happens to the home. Through the chair, Do what is think, the requirement? Hold on, let him finish. Do you think two cars per unit is enough on that lot? Through the chair? Yes. What is the requirement for a unit? There would be it's one and a half two. cars per unit, or is it two? Because it's not a multifamily, it's uh, two cars per unit. And, and that's what we showed. I know that's what the plan showed. However, and, and, and the plan. However, will be, it's before the planning board as a special permit. So depending on what other accommodations, no, my goodness. The other thing we had talked about, it, it, I went out to the site today with with but, our chair, and we had a conversation about. Uh, what is the possibility, uh, not just having tandem parking, but you know, moving the building up a little bit and having the parking be like like we see in a lot of multis, where you have the parking around the back, where you have a you know a small parking area in the back where you could have six spaces, and then they could turn around there and pull out. So basically, you pull the building up, whatever it is, ten feet, so it's in line with the other properties up and down the street or closer to it, and then you have a parking area in the back. The lot itself is relatively flat. Yeah. I mean, um, whatever I whatever much... suggestions the board has, we'll consider for sure. I don't know how much. I don't know By how much. By pulling the building it. forward, it'll be it'll be less expensive to put the utilities in. Mm -hmm. It makes all the sense in the world to pull it forward. Yep. Again, I was instructed to have something where we could turn around the vehicle and come out with the nose, and that was the idea that I had. Mm -hmm. We can easily. I'll, I'll put triple spaces up the side of the building if you'd like to see them, and then we could have six spaces. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a. Uh, yeah, with driveway width, we don't want to go beyond either. Just saying. But. Mm -hmm. Paul, do you see Mr. Silva's name and he's she's under the uh, mm -hmm. attendees? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know if he wants. Applicant? Had to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to talk, he's more than welcome to. It's really up to him. I, I'd encourage him to. Okay. Mr. Silva, I, I unmuted you. If you'd like to speak, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, I don't know if he's there or doesn't want to, but I I, okay. I, re I request the uh, mute. He didn't. So. All right. Before I go um, to the open of the hearing to attendees, of the board members have any further qu any questions at this time? Okay. Um, I, I suppose the one question I had, and it's going to go towards um, what one of the abutters I think is going to ask in a minute, because I read her letter, and we can forward mm -hmm. that to you if you haven't seen it already. Oh, yeah. uh, um, it, it just came in, I think, today. Um, so you certainly, and I, I'm sure Ms. Jarvie will have, go over all this together, but she did have a good point about uh, Wilmot Street in the immediate area, that they're predominantly single-family houses. Has the applicant looked at building a single-family house there? I can't answer that question. I'm not the applicant. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to echo that it is the lot layout itself, the site, is it's not in keeping with the rest of the neighborhood. All right. Any further? Anybody else? All right. We can. Could I, could I, sure. Madam Chair? So basically, if I can just review in my head what I need to do as the engineer. Locate the house next door, show it set back to the side yard and show it set back to the front, revise the parking, and show the building moving forward. 
I think well, that's, that's some at a minimum. Well, some preliminary comments, and then we'll hear from the public and see if right. any of that changes anything. All right. I just wanted to <laughs> and, and ex explore the possibility of changing the plans from a two-family to a single-family, and see what the see what that where that goes. And also, as I mentioned, you know, at the beginning of the meeting, uh, a definite contact and a conversation with the abutter. And, and, and I'll have the owner do that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. Thank so you. if there's anybody in the audience, either physically, oh, there's one here, <laughs> or virtually. I just came from surgery, so I just have to wear my mask. Certainly. <laughs> so anyways. Do you just state your I, name? Uh, my name is Paula Dvarosian. I live at 85 Lunenburg Street. Okay. And I have at the corner property of Lunenburg Street and Wilmot Street. Okay. Okay. And I've been there for 66 years. My family's been there since the 1930s. So I'm very familiar with Wilmot Street, my goodness. Um, as, as bittersweet, I can still ID all the families that live on that street as single family homes. And I still ID the homes as the original homeowners. One thing is um, we always had land. So even though Lunenburg Street was at the bottom of Wilmot Street, there was always land between us. And we all had privacy and we all respected one another and so forth. As a matter of fact, one of the beauties is um, Peter's sister lives, and I could see Peter's sister's house from my house, from, from Lawrence Street, which is great, you know what I mean? So there was a lot of land. So now we're looking into, um, in 2016, um, the, the property at 93 Lunenburg Street was bought um, with the intentions Supposedly, I thought it was a single family home, and it turned out to be a rental. So now they're renting out the, whoever the property owner was, was renting out the property, and you had renters, and you think of one or two cars? No, we were looking at Mack trucks, monster trucks, dump trucks, tow trucks were coming up on Wilmont Street. And despite all that, it was tolerable, but it made it a nuisance on our street because they, their driveway was very narrow. So they had all this land in the back and they were starting to park on the dirt and so forth of the land. Um, now I'll find out, and I was felt that we were blindsided, all of a sudden the property got sold within a day. You know, we didn't even know that he was subdividing the property. I thought it was gonna be all nice, one big, um, happy lot and beautiful with land. And that's what separates our street from Lunenburg Street because it's a, all single family homes. And now, is we were looking, when I found out, I saw them marking on the street, and then I found out it was gonna be a two-family. And I'm like, a two-family on Wilmot Street? Seriously? So anyways, I said, where are they gonna put it? It's a little postage stamp. But apparently through the drawing or whatever, I saw it, and it looked too, too cluttery. And it's like, even at that part of the street, it slopes down a little bit. Where are they gonna park, coming out, and so forth? That part of Wilmot Street, if you ever go up it, is very narrow. And then it kind of like comes in, narrows, and then it kind of widens up a little bit. So that's the hard part. In the last 20, 15, 20 years, I've seen traffic going up our street. I'm like, where's all this traffic going up our street? I, now, before it was like, now multiple cars were going up the street. Then school buses, and now Amazon trucks are going up our street. What happens is when they come up our street, Wilmot, it turns to the left and it becomes um, Prescott Street. There's several, um, you know, multi homes there. And at one point it was very quiet. Now all of a sudden it's like four, five, six, seven, very, very tight parking now. When we have the rubbish trucks out there or the recycle trucks, they put them in the middle of the street. You can't even get by. So what's gonna happen in that one section of Wilmot Street as they're coming down the street, you know, or up the street, you know, is it gonna get tight again? Also during the winter time, um, because I've seen it all the time, very hard when the trucks come up to plow or to sand our hill. And it's very, very slippery. And it's very, um, it, it could be very dangerous coming down that hill and then landing on Lunenburg Street. And I've seen that many close calls coming down on Lunenburg Street. But um, as a matter of fact, that building's getting hit several times because of that. Um, however, I just wanted to think that to put a two-family house, if you're gonna build, build a single-family home. And that's how I think it should be done. 
And um, if you ever go up on Wilmot Street, you'll see the area, and then you should be able to evaluate it. I just don't see a two-family house there at all, and so forth. And I'll never get to see your sister's house anymore, mm -hmm. <laughs> or the sunrise. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for your comment. I have a hand raised, uh, Cheryl Jarvie, who's the, I believe, the director butter to the right. Okay. Cheryl, whenever you're ready, just hit the microphone. There you go. Good evening. Yeah, I did it. We got yeah, you. I did it. You got me. Okay. Um, I, like Paula de Matarosian, uh, my parents bought the house at um, 12 Wilmont Street in 1957, and it abuts um, this new drawing. No one has contacted me as the owner, uh, the developer or the owner, about this new situation. Just wanted you to know. So it was a surprise to me when I got a card in the mail um, 10 days ago that this had progressed so far. So, but my goal in talking tonight um, is to say, I want to protect a neighborhood. Um, you know, it's very weird. Wilmont Street is a high hill. It's the equivalent of a city street. Um, but the houses and people have been neighborly for centuries, or is it decades? Decades. Um, but, and we saw what happened when, um, in 1996, when um, 93 Lunenburg Street, a single family whole house was sold and then became a rental. And with that rental, we have found people who are noisy, loud, have huge occupancy, cars coming and going. At one point in time, it appeared there was a chop shop there. There were so many cars and they were working on um, vehicles. Those tenants are gone now, but we saw how quickly one change in, a, in housing can totally reform a whole neighborhood. And so to have another two sets of houses right there it's, um, I would like to prevent the neighborhood and Fitchburg as a whole to prevent it from continuing to go downhill and degrade, no pun intended with the hill on Wilmont Street. But um, I think I, I'd like to prevent, see what we can do together to prevent problems. There are, as um, is in my note you'll have in your packets, there are major parking problems, major. Um, people have nowhere to park, so they park on the street. The plows cannot go around, go around them so that a high hill street doesn't get plowed thoroughly. Um, we have one renter who owns a tow truck or uses a tow truck has to leave at three, four, five in the morning and warms it up, making lots of noise, waking people up. But parking is an issue that needs to be considered. Um, the other thing is safety. Right around the corner, it's almost a different neighborhood. There are tenement houses, and there are lots and lots of children who go up and down the both driveways on the street, mine and the people across the street from me, as well as up and down Wilmot Street, because it's fun. And with a narrow street and cars going fast and increasing the number of cars, you know, it's putting children at risk, and this, it's a setup for a big accident to happen one day. Um, it's like, I think that um, adding a duplex is going to, you know, impact our neighborhood in a very negative way. Um, I think that it will, it will increase traffic, it will increase noise, it will increase... Um, increase just traffic in general, humans coming up and down, it, um, is a concern of mine. But it's also for myself. It's like, I'm used to privacy in the next to my house. So it's like, what will this, the question I have is, what will this do to devalue my own property? So my intention, as I said, is to protect a little oasis in Fitchburg that is operated as a neighborhood, one city block. And so, you know, people have gone around and um, no, one, no one tried to contact me, owner, developer, engineer, none of them did. And to have three cars, 
you know, times two, six extra cars going up and down is a concern of mine. So in summation, I think you can read what I wrote. I, I wish that the, this body will postpone making a decision until the neighbors can get together with our ward counselor, with the developers, and see so we can communicate what our concerns might be so we might be able to um, develop a more workable plan that will have a positive um, impact on the neighborhood, not a negative impact. Do you have any suggestions that, that, that we can discuss today? Well a, well, a suggestion to consider, you know, renters are different than owners, you know, maybe make them condos. I don't know that, you know, that suggestion would go anywhere. Maybe it would be the one a single family house. Maybe it would be its situation on the lot so it's less invasive toward my property and reducing my prop privacy on my property. Uh, those are three things um, that come to mind right now. But I think that if we can work with our ward counselor and key neighbors um, to discuss it further, we would probably come up with a better plan. So I would hope that um, you would postpone any decisions because I think it's going to impact the neighborhood in a negative way. And we don't, Fitchburg doesn't need more of that. Well, we appreciate your comment. And we'd like to make sure that um, particularly abutters have a direct comment uh, regarding um, any proposal. It is here for a special permit, so there are some statutory timelines that the board has to abide by as well mm -hmm. um, for that consideration. So it's, it's not like the, the you know, plan can't go on forever, so to speak. So we have to gather our information and deliberate in that, in that realm. So we, that's just why we have the public hearing process for that. We do let, we'd, let, we'd let and as you heard, encourage the developer to reach out to you and any others, uh, abutters, regarding uh, their thoughts on the project and to address types of privacy. There's abilities to, sh you know, sh it is a buildable lot, I guess, number one. So it does meet the minimum square footage for to put a structure there. So the question is, what's the, going to, to, to be um, the most non-invasive or the most disruptive also to the neighborhood? and probably accommodate a lot of off-street parking as well. Um, you mentioned privacy, so that I'm sure the board will be interested in what um, what you consider you'd like to see for privacy, whether it be a fence and or landscaping um, along a property line mm -hmm. in uh, regards to that. So those will be some of the, the things we'll be yeah. we'll, we're, we're, we're interested in, as well as the feedback of you know single family, two family um, aspects. I, and and, and I, I do want to say something. I, you know, obviously, I, I, I would definitely prefer that the applicant at least you know at least put together some form of um, uh, less than a half-hearted attempt to see if they would be interested in doing a single because I think that would alleviate a lot of concerns. But I do want to say that just just so that everyone understands, if this were in residence B or residence C, which it would most likely be in res C if it weren't previously attached to that Lunenburg uh, Street property, a, a two family would be allowed by right. So I, I, I say that with the understanding that I, you know, I, I'd like the developer to look into, you know, the, the financial feasibility and the possibilities of, you know, if he wants to do a single, and if he can do a single. Um, however, I do want the neighborhood to understand that that a two-family is, al is allowed in that area and is predominant in that area. And when I say that area, I mean Res C, which is the, res the, the zoning district it would be in had it not been attached to 93 Lunenburg Street previously. So, you know, that, that was just one thing I wanted to get out there that I mentioned the thing about the single and I do want the developer to look at the possibilities of doing that. However, um, I want everyone to, to, to understand that in every zoning district in this immediate area, two family is allowed by right. So that's not an unusual ask to allow a two family to be on that lot. So, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, just, just, just one aside. Um, 
I guess at that point, I, I'll defer to Councilor Cruz. He has his hand raised if yes, you want Councilor? to take him now. Hold on one second. I got to un unmute him. Go ahead, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Can everybody hear me? We can. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Good evening, everybody. I apologize for not being there in person. I'm just here to speak briefly on the about special permit on behalf of the residents you've already heard from, and I, I want to thank them for speaking and for caring about the neighborhood. It's, it's great to see. Um, my hope was that the board would consider a continuance on this for all the reasons you've heard, not until after the holidays, but uh, it sounds like you're headed in that direction already, so uh, that's mm -hmm. it for me. Thanks. Yes, yes thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I think the present plan uh, definitely needs work. Um, and as well as getting the feedback from the public and the board about other considerations so that they could come back with, um, you know, a, a communicate with appropriate individuals and come back with a revised plan. Is it okay to speak? Yes. Um, through the chair, um, I just want to, <clears throat> if I'm going to be going on the property at number 12, I need to um, let the homeowner know that I will be on their property because it could be a trespass. Um, I know the surveyor under Mass General Laws with the 24-hour notice can go on any property as long as it doesn't do any damage. But I, I didn't know, even know that was person, a thing. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. oh, it is. It's one of the statutes, and it's in there for the surveyor to be able to go on property. Uh, they have to give a 24-hour notice. I'm wondering if the lady is still listening, if it would be okay if we went on that property, locate the side of the building, the front of the building, how far it sets back from the street. I'll also locate there's trees, there's bushes, there's shrubs, other things along the hill between our proposal and where her property is. The one thing I was going to ask you that, that isn't necessarily on this plan is, so Paul and I had noticed there's, there's one on the left, if you're looking at the lot on the left-hand side, there's three trees. The middle one's obviously dead. It's very dead. If, if the frontage trees, if you could just tell us which ones are staying, which ones are going. Because I'm just curious, and, and I'm sure the neighborhood, you know, when you start taking down trees, that's, right. it looks like if you're, I know you said you didn't do the survey, so you probably can't speak to the actors. No, 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 I, I, was, I was in the field for the survey. Okay, I, I just, it looks like. Engineer look, usually doesn't approach the, and talk about the projects with the abutters. Usually the homeowner does, but go ahead. Sure, uh, yeah, My, what I was going to say was, it looks like if this survey is correct, the, the edge of pavement in the right of way, there's a significant difference there. So I think some or all of those trees might be within the, the public way. Um, and, and, and that's another thing. I want to make sure he doesn't take out trees that he's not allowed to take out either. So keep that in mind as well. That's, so they should locate where they're, whether they're on the lot or on the plan, especially if he's planning on taking them down. If they're going to stay, then it's not really an issue. Right. Did, but Through the chair I, again, I don't want to speak directly. Um, the chairs can be, uh, the, the trees can be located. It's a 40 foot, it's a 40 foot wide road. It's probably paved 24 feet, 26. Right. So you have that remaining 14 feet, 16 feet. That's for sidewalks, utility poles, mm -hmm. anything else that may go up and down that road in the future. So it's usually about eight feet from where the pavement is to where the actual property line is. Mm -hmm. So those trees can be located and shown on the plan. They will be. Yeah, that, that's all okay. I'm saying, yep. especially if he's planning yeah. to take them. I was just curious. Um, the... As well, as well as any, like, uh, between on the property line, there are a number of trees between. Um, There's a huge one up near number 12. I mean, that one's yes. definitely staying. I mean, that, that'll be shown on the plan after this, but. No, so yeah, like, you can't even tell from this. The, There's some pines through there. There's some other stuff, too. Um, a lot of those aren't there. <laughs> we, were, no. we were just there. I don't know if they cooked trees down recently, but it's definitely pretty open in there. We, There's only about a half dozen trees there. When I went to lot to survey it, um, it, it's like it was now. There was no downed trees. There was no evidence of wood chip. Yeah. There was no evidence of anything being dragged. It, it was cleared when we got there. Yeah. Um, so and, 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 a, and a lawn and established growth. Uh, there was grass growing. There was other stuff. So it wasn't something that just happened in the previous three to four months. Perhaps the lady that has the rug company. Right. Um, and it's down there all the time with the business and a house. It, it's not important. Uh, the recent history of the so plot isn't important. The other aspect would be um, like landscaping plan as well as a segment show, like a walkway similar, the other walkways that go up to the out to the streets to the front porch. So it's going to be allowable to have two driveways then, tandem on one side, tandem on the uh, other? I didn't say it's, I don't, I. <laughs> I think what we were talking about <laughs> was, was one, one wider one. driveway that services both cars. Yeah. All right. 
So, and, and that's why the applicant has to meet with the abutter, whether they want the driveway on that side or the other side, knowing that whatever side the driveway isn't on, the house is a little bit closer to right. the, the, the property line because you gotta make, you're gonna, the driveway has to be at least three feet from the property line, that's city code. And then so three feet from a structure. And then you'll have to fit two wide, that's nine each, so it's 18 wide total. So if you did that, you're talking 21 feet, you only have 23 to work with, well, which is enough. 20, 24, it's three feet from the building as well. Oh, three feet from the building too. Yeah. So right, so you need 24 feet. Um, Currently the building's centered on the lot. That's what I, I tried to do to make it fair to either side. It's yep. 23 and a half, 23 and a half. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, Dave, I'm, uh, just bear with me for one second. Okay? Sure. Uh, hey, Cheryl, um, is it okay if, if I if we have him at some point come onto the property just to just to figure out kind of where your house is in relation to property line and this property, so we can next month when we meet we can look at all of that how they line sure. up and sure that's fine. Okay. Um, it'd be nice to have notice, but yeah, and, and you have my contact information uh, on that document that I sent oh. out to you. Which yeah. we'll provide a, I, with a copy. I, I will notify her the day before that we're coming out, not the day of. And in the day that we do come, we will knock on the door also to alert her. Right. It'll, it'll probably be 9 a.m. And, and, and just so, uh, thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and just so you know, um, the, the kind of the purpose of that is, I just want to get a feel for how your building setback versus hers. That's why I'm asking. Plus, how close, it looks like, Based upon the GIS when I was on site, it looks like her house is quite close to a property line. I, I think it's two feet or three feet off the line. It probably right. violates zoning right now. Yeah, so I did it from the aerial, and I got about 10 feet from the aerial. But either way, it's pretty close to the property line. So the reason why I say that is so that on that side where her property is, you guys can mitigate whether it's, you know, a vinyl fence or arborvitaes or whatever, because we usually do that for screening for, for new construction buildings. And then how much of the vegetation that's there will remain? Or right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and as you were there, you noticed that there's a, probably a six to eight foot incline yes. that leads up to her property. So her property, probably her first floor would be looking up at the roof of the new house. Right, that's why I would suggest Arborvitaes. Yeah. Um, and then it's also, right, where where is it more practical for the driveway to be located? And I think you also should explore more than the minimum amount of parking spaces to try to accommodate. Probably I, I, keeping probably keeping no no greater than the eighteen foot, you know, driveway. What I could uh, through the chair. Uh, what I could do is um, show two dashed areas off to the side of the two sets of tandems that could be potentially more parking spaces. So you could put six cars there. Then no cars would be in the street. I'm I, I'm afraid I, don't I don't follow you. If you had two cars, one two tandem, yep. and another two cars, one two tandem, next to the one set of tandems, put another spot, and next to these two tandems, put another spot. How about you just make it deeper? <laughs> that's well, all. <laughs> that's what I did. No, just no. No, no I'm saying like if you make them tandem, deeper. Just make them three. Oh, feet. so make them three and three. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Three feet off the property line, three feet off the building. Make them deep enough and make it so the last space isn't within the right of way. Then you know, or explore they at least have the they bank. at least have ample off street parking. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Can Whether I it chime be... in with a couple of things that Nick Erickson just just sent a minute ago? How will a roof and parking area runoff be handled? Runoff needs to be retained on site and cannot be directed to neighboring properties. Foundation drain cannot discharge to the street per city code. It needs to be retrained on site or connected to the city's stormwater system. And that's from the DPW commissioner Nick Erickson. We can forward that to you too, just so you yeah. can, just so you can mitigate all that when you redo the plan. Because you obviously, you know, you're going to have to do the plan um, to, to to show these things. And your snow storage space can be at the end of that parking area because obviously they're going to clear it forward. Just make sure you, that, that you know that it's cleared forward. And yeah. um, so snow storage, um, some landscaping, of course, the driveways. Right, screening against screening. the Jarvie side. Um, and then ultimately really talking with the neighbor about the, you know, shifting of the house, whether it's, is it more privacy or is it Bennett, you know, I know this topography to, to look at there too, but this, should the driveway be to the left, to the right? It's I mean, to the right, it pushes it away, the house away, but then there's the parking that's closer. And if, if, I, if I were the abutter, if it were me, I would want the driveway on the left and the house 
you know, the, 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 the driveway away from the, the direct to butter. And I'm, I'm doing all these, all these conversations based on the premise that this lot was bought off the property owner of 93 Lunenburg Street, so they're fine with what you're doing. So that's why I haven't even mentioned screening on that side or parking on that side, because so far all I've heard is there's renters there, and I know you bought the lot, from, your applicant bought the lot from them. So I'm gonna assume that there's no problems on that side unless we hear differently. And you're correct. If all the parking's on the right, there won't be any vegetation. If the right. parking's on the left, then the natural vegetation would be allowed to stay on the right, and the house will go in. So that would provide a further screening to the house at 12. If the house at 12 wanted the parking on the right, there would only be a chance to screen for three feet right. off you, of their property. You will have to shift the building a tiny bit towards yeah. the Jarvie property because, you'll, again, you'll need to make up three feet, 18 feet wide, and three feet. To, to meet like a foot code two. requirements. And, yeah, and that's a minimum, so I'd go, I would but go. But it's, it's still way more than the setbacks that are required in Res B and Res C, so. To, to the chair, I, I would at least have a two-way, two-foot extra leeway also. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't want to be so caught that I'm three and three and, you know, I'm building with, you know, mm -hmm. pouring a concrete foundation, you know, setting pin nails to get it in. So I think they strongly recommend you look at the architect, whoever they're on the architectural renderings too, that we they be more accurate to what is going to be built there. I'll inform the uh, owner. And um, I guess that strong consideration of towards a single family. You know, so if you want dual plans to submit for consideration. I, I would tell I would like tell that. the applicant, and I know he hears this that yeah. if this no the the applicant texted me. He's he was getting he was at an airport when he was, the meeting was starting. <laughs> Way back at six o'clock, he's in a plane. Oh, okay, that's fine. What I was going to say was, and you can convey this to them if he decides to do it as a single family. A lot of these things are not an issue anymore, so he has he has much less site cost too because there is going to be screening required. There's going to be more pavement, obviously, with the you know the the parking area. Uh, There'll be just be, less income. Might be, but. Um, but 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 there's there's also going to be there's also going to be a greater possibility of getting what he wants and getting mm -hmm. something built there. And he has bought a lot now and has no guarantees of anything and at this point. And we're not thinking of it purely as an income property either. No. I, Where it's I, like what is suitable for the neighborhood is how we're seeing it. Yeah. So so anyway, I just heard so many finance numbers <laughs> exactly. from the hearing before me that I thought maybe it was appropriate to say one. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. You went through every different uh, nomenclature there was. I'm surprised yeah, you didn't talk about Bitcoin with them. Maximize the uh, monetary. Um, <laughs> one thing that's from one thing that's site. kind of running through my mind at this point is, you know, if a, if a home is built there, whether it be a single family or a two family, and I think I really think it's probably more appropriate if something is going to be done as a single family. What I'm starting to uh, wonder is I'm sure all of the people that live in that neighborhood, all the abutters, all the people on Wilmont Street, they want to see a nice looking structure there, if there's going to be a structure. And what I hear happening and developing is tandem parking for six cars in a tarred front. So what I envision is this house with a tar front. So that it it might not be that workable uh, as a two family. I'm just throwing that out. I want you know if a house is going to be built there, I would, I'm certainly the first to say it's got to look good. <laughs> you know, through the go look good. through the chair, you're the one that brought up you wanted three spots for each unit, mm -hmm. right? So that would that I'd have to put six if it could be done appropriately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we, we mentioned, not in front of the house. Yeah, like this picture here, obviously, that's not what we're talking no, about. No, we're not talking no. about any of um, it. Basically, basically, drive up and down the street, look at all the properties have a house and a driveway on one side or the other. That's what we're talking about. So make, you know, make, it, make it match as best you can. And, um, and, you know. and you've heard, I re realize, right, that there's minimum code requirements for the parking. Is there's a minimum of the, the two. But even if it's a single family, you're probably looking at maybe at least three to four potential, just to keep making sure everything's off the street and has, can accommodate that. And it looks like the site could accommodate that. Dave, do we have an email? Let me jot down the address, and I'll send um, sure. Nick Erickson's comments directly so you can get it. And make sure you send the abutters comments, too. Yep. Yeah, especially because the contact information is in there for them to talk to, to get in touch. Is there, um, do we have department comments? Other than what uh, Nick had just mentioned. Okay. I really. Uh, Cheryl has her hand raised again. Paul. Yeah, that's okay. Go ahead, Cheryl.
Cheryl? Yeah, I'm back. I'm okay. back. To the <laughs> That's okay. You brought up That's the okay. finance question, and it, it's like, is this intended to be low-income housing? Is my question. Um, we can we well, can ask that question. She asked whether or not it's going to be um, a low-income housing. If it was, if it was, a, and I can't answer that question. So I'm just the engineer. But that would that would be helpful to know. Mm -hmm. Just looking at what happened in 93 Lunenburg Street, when they got tenants appeared to be very low income, we ended up with loud noises and evidence of drug use, of fighting, and multiple cars, and lots of people okay. coming. We, we have to be cautious with tying those two things together, right. too, Cheryl. Yes, yes, I, I stand corrected. I know that's true. Okay. Thank you. Through the chair, I'm, I'm going to ask for a continuance anyways, but mm -hmm. I, I, I think that we need to have a sit down with the neighbors and talk these things through. I mean, I, I, within two weeks before it gets too far so the plans can be drawn correctly. Yeah. So, I mean, even next week would be a good time to do that, but it's Thanksgiving week now. <laughs> so, I mean, if I can get Cheryl's contact information when the owner gets back from his one week vacation, I believe it's one week. Well, yeah. It's now easier and all this is going on. It's longer. always easier if you guys Maybe sit we down. can sit and we can yeah. talk and they can bring the counselor, they can bring anyone they want, and we'll hear all the information the neighborhood wants to relay to us. And the owner can talk back and say what he intends to build, who he intends to rent, what, whatever he intends to do with the property. And that might help um, with this situation. I can tell you from experience, the face to face tends to solve most of the problems. So I highly suggest you do that. So, okay. Right. And we uh, appreciate Councillor Cruz also um, offering to have the coordinated meeting. Uh, and, and that's the other thing, too. Councillor Cruz might be able to, to organize a meeting, e either if not on site, then maybe here or somewhere else. And, it, you know, the councillors usually are pretty good about doing that. So, um, and, and I'm sure the owners, it, he works in Fitchburg all the time. He's doing rehabs at other buildings. He'd easily be able to come over. Mm -hmm. yep. Anytime yep. it's available. Perfect. Thank you. We have one more. Oh, no, I just oh. want to make a comment that the two houses behind that property are single family homes, too. So. Mm -hmm. yep. On, on Lawrence Street. Street. Yeah. So. Yes, that is something we do is go around and take a look I mean, at what, yeah. it's, what the surrounding area is. Like Paul had said. I think Elton John had that album, Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only the Piano Player. No. Yeah. Like, like Paul had said, there's obviously we need revisions anyway, so it gives you yeah. time to, to meet with them, make revisions to the plan, present us a plan with the based on the comments we talked today, and then you know hopefully next month. We may need to extend into January. That's fine. If it is, we just ask that you t you ask us so that. Well, I have to because you have a you have a forty five day period, so I would have to appear and grant you further. Well, right now no, December is okay, right? Permit, Ninety oh, days. Okay. Yeah. So not a site, not we, a site plan. So we request in writing, um, emails, fine, and, um, any type of a continuance prior to the next meeting, right. mm -hmm. if you need one. Yeah, and and I understand it might take you longer. If it does, just give us a heads up so that way, if people show up, we can tell them that. We're well, not. the neighborhood meeting is going to be the most important thing. As soon as that can happen, then the plan can get worked on. If, we, if they're not going to be able to meet for three weeks, I'll never have a plan done in mm -hmm. one week. Understand completely. And get it in for review. Yep. I mean, it's one thing to have it done the morning of the meeting, but nobody looks at it. Yeah. You're not going to consider it. Right. Yeah, at least the Friday before is usually what we. we well, need. we certainly appreciate everyone's attendance this evening and comment. So it's going to help. Um, make the project. Make a motion to continue project. to our December meeting. Second. Motion's been made with the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Continued. Thank you very much for your time. You're Thank you, welcome. Dave. Could someone forward me that revised Dropbox link? Yes. I just got it like right before I came tonight. I got it. Yeah, I, I got it up well, right here. I never got Thank it. Thank you. Laura didn't get it either. I don't know if anybody else got it. I, yeah, I was. I, well, I looked at the stuff this morning, and then oh, okay. when I just came in and logged on and like went to look at it, it was gone. I right, should have it, Amanda. Or oh. deleted. Like oh. stuff in the box was deleted. Mine was deleted so, too. So Paula, the revised. <laughs> The revised yeah. link was sent to you, to you and me. Yeah. You always <laughs> All right. Hold on. Let me uh, forward it to the. Oh, I don't have. Michael have Thank to do you. it. I don't have the whole board. The revised link was just sent to Paula and I, Mike. 
I just forwarded it to Amanda because she asked, but I don't have all the board addresses. Okay. The revised, revised. Dropbox, link, Dropbox link? Yeah, sure. Do I need to sign in anywhere? No, you're nope, good. You're Thank you very set. much. Uh, let me find that. Okay. Our next item. Modification of special permit. 219-19 Final Touch Contractor LLC increased from four units to six units on Old Princeton <coughs> Road. Thank you for being patient. No worries. This is only the third time this project has come before us. Yeah, we have a I think three different engineers as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, just uh, for the record, Chris Aarons with Handy Engineering here on behalf of Final Touch Contractor. Uh, for the modification of a uh, existing special permit and site plan approval for a uh, residential development off of old uh, Princeton Road. Uh, this project was originally permitted over multiple phases. Um, currently the active permit is for four um, uh, residential units off of old Union or old uh, Princeton Road, if you will. Um, I can hold off for a moment, sorry. Yep, yep. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to finish up a different thought. What do you, what, just the site plan? Um, why don't we open up the render, uh, the one on the top. Oh, sorry. And this was under a uh, planned unit development. So um, under the original approval, it was for four residential units. Uh, since that time, the proponent has decided to modify the original building layout. Um, under the original permit, uh, the buildings were quite large, if you will, uh, which, precluded them from incre increasing the number of units on the property itself. Um, the pr current proponent is proposing to reduce the overall size of the units to increase the number of units up to six. Um, so there's an additional two units. Uh, the limit of work um, and the driveway location has remained essentially the same. Uh, we're actually seeing a net decrease in the impervious area on the property, primarily by the reduction in the overall scope of the buildings themselves. Um, other modifications that we're proposing uh, would be relative to the water uh, supply uh, to the property itself, as well as modifications to the sewer system in order to accommodate the proposed development. Uh, besides that, the general intent of the uh, original permit is to be maintained, uh, with the exception that um, the additional two units be incorporated into the actual project itself. Um, pretty much the general gist of the project. If there's any questions from the board, I'll be more than happy to answer them. All right, since I, I think it was only the, the one site plan, so on the layer, I was looking for where the snow storage is gonna be and landscaping layout. Any lighting, are there any lamp posts planned? Is there any signage in the front for the condominium complex? Are there totes just gonna be used? Are they being stored in the garages? Sorry, the multiple questions just fired at you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want us to just keep going? Just keep going. I'll try. I'll well, don't well, fire for a moment. <laughs> so I only had I had two that, and, and I apologize if you want to take them individually. That's fine. The, the one was um, the prior permit condition of maintaining access to the rear pond. That's still that's that, is that that northern car path on there? Uh, yes, I believe that car path was that original intent, but that's not that's being maintained as such. It's not. Pretty much the entire project is staying the same footprint relative to uh, the driveway and the house location or the building locations. Right. One, the permit condition in both permits, the most recent one as well as the 2004 one, was that, or actually, might, that one might have, that one was just the most recent one, I think, um, that, that you maintain access to that rear porch, public access to that to that rear pond. Um, the reason we did that back then was one of the components to plan your development is an open space, and the open space in this project is all wetland. So the one trade-off that we had with Bob Donnell was, okay, we'll let the public access the pond for canoeing or fishing or whatever, and that was a permit condition. I thought I remembered, I. I thought there was a car, a car path or an access road on the site to get there, as well as, and I'm trying to find it, one of the permit conditions was to maintain that. Um, 
Let me hold on. Let me find it. I don't think there was ever an access road. No, it was just the car, the path to maintain the path though. No, no hold on. I got. I'll, yeah, I'll get it. It was main. It was maintain access. It, Mike, was this just the eight unit one you gave me? Yes, it was. Do you have the four unit one over there? Actually, I think it's in the Dropbox. It's in the Dropbox. The four, I, I do. I got it right here. So the Dropbox, the I mean, the permit condition from that one was. Um, create and maintain public access path to the abutting pond, like you said. Right, create and maintain public access path to the abutting pond to the east. Um, at, my, at this point in time, the only thing that's being requested to be changed on the, on the special permit in the PUD is the number of units. So um, any of the outstanding con or conditions under the original approval mm -hmm. are intended to be maintained intact. Okay, and that leads me to the, the the, the, one the, 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 one that, the one that we noticed earlier today. Um, so I, I, I don't know if any board members got out there today. Actually, let me pull them up. I have the photos right here. Um, the roadway is terrible. And I remembered, I had told Paula, my recollection was that one of the permit conditions was to, to, to repair the road. Um, and, and, and it looks like this goes back to 2004, which for some reason was lost in the most recent permit. Um, the, the permit condition was the applicant shall make roadway improvements and associated drainage improvements to Old Princeton Road subject to DPW approval. Pavement width shall be a minimum 22 feet from 5th Mass Turnpike to the site driveway and then taper to the, the existing pavement width of Old Princeton Road. Um, it, it looks like between then and now that middle section of Old Princeton Road was ground and, and just graded to... Graded. But it's still... Oh, it's well. The, so the, what I was going to say was, at the very least, where pavement ends about 50, 75 feet from uh, Fifth Mass Turnpike, for about 100 or 200 feet, it's it's almost unpassable how bumpy it is. I mean, it's it's really bad. So that needs to get addressed. I, I think that in keeping with the prior permit condition, that pavement should at least extend to um, you know the beginning of the site access. Um, you know, understanding perfectly well that it, it doesn't necessarily need to continue on, but whatever traffic is created, even though it's minimal on this site, it doesn't make that roadway any worse. So basically from, from the site on, it can stay the way it is, but from the site driveway down, it, sh it, should, be, it should be repaired and repaved. I'm just, pull, I'm just gonna pull up the photos. Um, just gotta bear with me for one second because I gotta remember where they were. Um, <laughs> While he's doing that, one of the conditions was no dumpster. Is that still the case? At this point, yes. Any, okay. the, all the original uh, permit conditions stand. Okay. So right. it'll be private trash. All right. yep. So let me... Um, pull this up here. It's also this repair or replace stockade fence on or near property lines <coughs> abutting parcel at 100 Old Princeton Road. Just reading one of those. All right, so that's site view from the um, from the far right portion of the site, looking towards kind of the pond and Fifth Mass Turnpike. Um, let's get to. Oops, sorry. Let's get to. <laughs> Fifth Mass Street condition. And I don't, I don't have all my stuff on here. All right. I don't know why it won't let me pull up. As he's doing that, do we checked with. Um DPW and stormwater. <coughs> there was something from uh, Nick. I remember seeing. Yeah, I believe we did see comments come back from um, DPW. Um, we're taking those under consideration as well. Okay. Oh, here we go. Sorry, my screen my screen changed when I brought this up. <coughs> All right. So this is from this is from edge of pavement, looking down. I mean, this, this stretch right here is particularly bad. Um, 
I guess that's probably only about maybe 100 feet. Um, the site access is way down here. If you can see where my cursor is, mm -hmm. it's right about where that, um, that, that cut-in is. Uh, and then obviously at the end you have the uh, the uh, electric company um, substation or whatever, um, but would I think we I think I did the approximate GIS and it's somewhere between 350 and 425 feet something like that. Okay. So it's not a really ex excessively long stretch of pavement. Um, it, it, something needs to be done. It, I'll leave it to the applicant to, to to propose what they think, but something has to be done. <laughs> Excuse me. Otherwise, we defer to DPW and again back to the original um, condition of just get it paved appropriate and speaking with our DPW department. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, no. I think any road work that happens on that road, we need to be. We need to have a conversation with DPW. Oh yes. First and foremost. <laughs> I don't want to say let's okay. repave it and have issues come up with DPW I mean, the other, or regrind or anything like that at this point in time. So The other uh, weird thing, and I don't know if it causes a problem with DPW, that I noticed is there's at least one, and I only noticed it because it looks so out of place, there's one manhole cover in the middle of the road, and it's just graded around it. And I would think during the winter, at the very least, that section needs to be paved just so you don't have plows digging up that you know that manhole cover it just seems like a it seems like it's very difficult to work around this is looking the other way this is looking the site is on my right the wetland portion of the site and it's looking towards um that that edge of pavement um so but that was a that was a previous per, previous permit condition that didn't make it into the most recent conditions for whatever reason did you drive over that paul I did, yeah. It's. I mean, it's. You could drive over it. It's. I mean, it's doable. It's just really careful. Yeah, yeah. You got to yeah. be slow. Yeah, you. You just can't go fast. <laughs> uh, Paul and Paul actually live near there. Uh, it is definitely a bumpy ride, regardless <laughs> of the speed. Mm -hmm. But I mean, aside from that, they, they, that, that's the one. I guess the biggest issue. I have no problem with the the the, the units. I, as a matter of fact, I remember when. Um, of course, we, I've dealt with Bob for many years now, so I know him. I remember when they came in and the board was surprised. Wait a second, we don't often be, get people going from eight units to four, mm. which was the request. And, you know, that we basically said, yeah, you know, no problem. That was approved. But I think the eight units that we, I, I, I vaguely remember in, in 04 when we had approved it, the eight units, the conversation was, you know, it's, it's, It'll be nice to have the development. If nothing else, it it updates the street, upgrades the street for the for the neighbors there. And I think that was the trade-off for the project at the time. And then I just don't know what happened between then and the you know the four unit reduction. Um, so it's been Erickson's comments here. They've been forwarded to Chris. Yeah. Um, do you want me to run through it really quick? Yeah, you can if you want. Okay. Uh, engineering Division says applicant to provide a proposed detail of site developer can the connection to existing city infrastructure. Per city contractor, uh, city requirements um, need to have a bonded contractor in order to work within the right of way. DPW Water has indicated that the existing two inch plastic water main in Old Princeton must be upsized to an eight inch to maintain the proposed develop to accommodate the proposed development. There is an existing eight inch gate valve and stub onto Old Princeton Road that can be utilized for the connection, contact water for information. The units are to have separate owners There needs to be separate services for each unit. This is necessary in the, in the event a service needs to be shut off for non-payment, et cetera, et cetera. Please note the pro uh, proposed development will be subject to new water service application and associated connection fees for each unit. Uh, I suggest reach out to DPW Water not less than 72 hours prior to excavation or connection to city infrastructure. Uh, wastewater Division, applicant has proposed a, uh, an 8-inch, uh, whatever the acronym is, SDR35 uh, sanitary sewer connection proposed um, to a proposed sanitary sewer manhole on Old Princeton Road, maybe the one that's sticking up out of the street. Please revise and resubmit to show details of the pros manhole and connection to the city's water main and details for various components of the sanitary sewer system. Uh, the proposed development includes six sanitary sewer connection, service connections to an eight inch um, wastewater line, which then connects to the city's 12 inch VC sewer on Old Princeton Road. Please revise and resubmit 
to specify the pipe size and material for the six, uh, six inch for the six sanitary sewer connections to the eight inch line. Uh, if the units are to have separate owners, the applicant shall implement a written agreement, for example, condo association, etc., recorded upon the deed of the property specifying ownership and operation maintenance responsibilities for each section of the proposed. Um, alternatively, six separate sanitary sewer connections could be made to the city's sanitary sewer system. Uh, the purpose of this is to clearly define future ownership responsibilities and associated costs. The cities had poor experiences with shared laterals that do not have a written agreement defining these things. And again, reach out to um, DPW Wastewater not less than 72 hours before working or excavation. Thank you. Anything from any other department? I think I got a no comment or approved from um, police chief. Okay. Yes. And this Sorry. is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience? Yes. Yes, sir. Folks, right next door. Um, thanks for the chance to speak. My name is Evan Hughes. I live with my son at old uh, 100 Old Princeton Road. 100. <clears throat> so, to orient us where in relation to the site you are. Is it south? If you're looking uh, at north? the property. That we're, red brick building uh, just to the right. Okay. The red brick building, yeah. Okay. So that was built in 1850. So um, I'm new to all of this. I don't know what, um, what interests the board, but uh, one of them is that road going in. Uh, my buddy Jack Hughes, who lives up the street, um, and I have figured out we believe there's an underground river going there. So they'll regrade that for us, and within three months, it's a death trap again. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be, a, oh, just pave it, and you're fine. That, that's a deeper project. Um, and it'd be great to get that fixed. I'm excited about getting something built next to me, but I'm a little concerned about going to, let's get as many units as we can. It feels like a smash and grab. Let's get some value, and then we'll leave and never come back. Um, two uh, uh, single-family units there would make the street look lovely, but we're going different. I knew there were units going in when I bought the house three years ago. But just upping the number of units, to me, decreases the value of the neighborhood. And, and we, earlier, we talked about having something similar in style to what's already there. Well, this is radically different um, than what's on the, the neighborhood now. There's a bunch of single families. There's a funny unit across from us that's a different configuration. But this will completely change the street. Um, so. Those are, the, those are the big concerns there. Um, oh, and, and I don't think any of us have been contacted. And I, I was hoping to contact, you know, I think I was in contact with the previous owner, but I haven't heard a, a whisper about what the plans are. So those are the three considerations that I have. Have you seen any architectural renderings or anything of the project? None. Okay. No communication. Like, can we bring those up? Also, there was, I just read, there was a permit condition that about uh, either repair or replacing the fence along 100 Princeton. Yeah. So, so what is there, a stockade fence there now? There still is. I have a picture of it. It's, it's, it's not in all that great of shape. And I believe it's on this site, right? The fences? Yeah. yeah and that's why it what was would a you like? condition. What would you like to see? it's not actually on your property. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, so to give you a little background, this goes back to 2004. Eight units were approved there. Mm. Eight, eight of units like this. The developer came back. To, well, he bought the project from the prior from owner. The Greens, yeah. 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 The developer, Bob Donnell, who was the most recent developer, sat on it for many years, and then came back and said, "I, I want to. I'm just going to do four. I, you know, for whatever reason, he didn't want to do the whole eight. Um, so that's why it's at four now. It was eight. There is a permit that was approved for eight units. Um, so." They came back and he reduced, I, it, oh, I know what it was. He reduced, because I'm reading it on the permit, reduced the number of units to four, but increased it to each being three bedroom units. Because prior, they were eight units, they could all only be two bedroom at most. So anyway, um, the fence, I think whoever the owner was at the time, um, I think we found out it wasn't on that property, so we said basically create a new fence so it looks nice between your property and their property. Um, we can also look at, like we talked about in the previous uh, application of, you know, is landscaping between the two or whatever else. Um, there's a few things that need to be ironed out with the permit anyway, so maybe you guys can get together at some point and, and, and you know, just show the plan, show them kind of what we're talking about. Um, I can pull up the, um, if you look up on one of the screens, I'll pull up the elevations. Mm -hmm. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. But there is a condition that says repair or replace stockade fence on or near property line of a budding parcel at 100 Old Princeton Road. Oh. So the question is, what would you like to see? 
not a stockade fence? Oh, I, I think a stockade fence is fine, and, and there's a lot of landscaping options. It's, it's a matter of creating a nice neighborhood. I mean, that's the I, interest. It, it's I, will, I will say, although, you know, they're not necessarily, you know, colonial in nature, um, the, 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 the materials and the design. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at something. Yeah. I thought it was up there. Hold on. The materials and design actually, they, they look like they'll be relatively upscale units. Um, it, it looks like you have some brick and stone in there. Is that right, Chris? So brick, stone, and... Um, and the size of the like units. Vertical, what is that? You have like a vertical vinyl or clapboard and then in a horizontal vinyl clapboard. I mean, I think the design is, at least as far as townhouses is, is is very different and can be done well if it's if it looks like that then side and rear and and that's the other thing maybe you can talk to you know the the neighbor about you know what 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 the side they're going to be looking at and if there's any you know screening or whatever else that you can do uh, either against those buildings or between the two properties And if, you know, if we can, that's what we like to condition, so we put it in there. Otherwise, it's kind of like talk and see what you can, you know, work out with the developer. But if we can put it in writing, we'll put it in writing. Put which in writing? What's that? But put, to, put what in writing? About, like, fencing or what buffer. Agreement or what agreement, out. right. So if you yeah. can, it, it's like, hey, I'd like to see a four-foot, um, you know, white vinyl fence with arborvitaes and or not. <laughs> I just want to see our providers. I don't want to see a fence. I just want a natural looking. So things of that nature. Oh, the, yeah, there's a lot of options. There's so much nature there. There's a lot to be done. But like I said, I haven't been sent anything. So this is the first time I'm looking at it. All right. Those renderings are available from our office. We can email them to you if you want to give your information to Mike. O'Hara. Yeah. Did Any you, of the submissions you, that are available? Sir, I thought I, in addition to the, the agenda and the link, I thought I had forwarded you a copy of these plans. Or yes. No? Today. Okay. Like a few hours before the meeting, but yes. Right. Perfect. <laughs> well, we, we, we we're going to give you some time to look at stuff because we have a couple things. You know, I like I said, I want I want the applicant to 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 respond to you know um, the, the particularly where that access path is. To, to the public access path to, to the pond, where that is, where that's gonna be. Um, I know you said we're gonna carry over all the permit conditions, they're, they're okay with all of them. Um, and then the only other thing uh, we'd be looking to add is how they're gonna um, upgrade the street and how they're gonna mitigate those, those issues. Um, but aside from that, I mean, I land. think the elevations, I, I, I see, we see, obviously, we see a lot of elevations, we see a lot of properties. I think, I think the elevations, again, if done correctly, I think they're going to be very nice looking units. Um, but, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Uh, I understand your concerns 100%. Uh, where, where you're living and you'd like to keep the character of the neighborhood the way it is. <clears throat> However, uh, this site where these six units are proposed, it's a beautiful site. Uh, it's great location, practically on Route 2. Uh, the renderings that the developer are offering are really look first class. So I, I would think, really, I would really think that this is just the opposite. I think it'll add value uh, to the location. Uh, obviously, they're not going to be sold for... Uh, Cheap money, they're going to be pretty pricey. You're going to have good people in there, so I think it's I think it's a great a great development. And also, we're trying to help with the roadway mm -hmm. situation right, yeah. for the existing residents there. We see a lot of uh, a lot of projects that go through here, and, and condo projects and housing projects, uh, and I think the developer went a little bit out of the way here to to really make this look good. I think it'll be quite you know, appealing in the area. And hopefully with the end point, too, of keeping that the green the open space, we need that some usable space. And that was the there was an existing cart path, but we want to make sure that it's like walkable and uh, usable path for access for the for the public and those in the neighborhood to be able to circumvent that and get to the pond. Mm -hmm. 
I appreciate what the board is saying, and I, I think developing that place is going to make it look great. I think it would look better with fewer units. That's, you yeah. know, is it in the interest of Fitchburg and the neighbors to stick more units in there? And I do agree. It, I'm going to look over the drawings carefully now that I have them. Great. Thank you for your comments. Mr. Hughes, before we do you know, because there's an, an, there? like a dozen other abutters besides you, do you know if um, and there's another Mr. Hughes, I know TJ, who used to be the veterans agent here years ago around the corner. Uh, have you talked to any of the, the uh, neighbors about it? Because I'm surprised you folks are the only ones here. Yeah, I, I talked to a couple of the renters. They said they were coming. Um, I assumed I, the Bowers would be here. I know Jack Hughes had a death in the family, so he's a bit distracted. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to take some of this information and talk around with folks. Okay. So that being said, does the board have any more questions? We want the applicant to come back with some additional information. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, I'd like to give the, you know, the abutter. I, I, I know we, we often say this. Um, I can't express enough. And Chris, you, you and Bill, you guys have been in front of us all day. Bill, he's got his hand raised. So I'll get to you in one second, Bill. But I mean, it's always easier. And I know you guys can't always predict these things. But it's always easier if you meet with the abutters ahead of time, just so that there aren't any, any particular issues. Like I said, I think all in all, the, the permit conditions were thorough before. I just kind of want to make sure, especially with that hiccup of the roadway, um, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page about that. Uh, Paul, is it okay if Bill talks? Bill yes. Hannigan. Go ahead, Bill. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Um, so, I, I've been I've been texting the uh, the applicant who is um, taking his kids to the World Cup. Um, his family there and stuff like that. But hey, um, Bill, is this the same applicant as Wilmot Street? It is. I was going to say I saw the same address, and I was going yep. through all my stuff frantically. Okay, all right. Yeah, so we'll we're, we'll try to we'll try to work with them on that one as well. Uh, but the uh, I, I just want to point out to the to the neighbor that the um, the intention was to basically um, allow the 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 six units within the same footprint of what was being built before. So the the the, the building um, scope and scale will be about the same. You know, uh, probably actually a little bit less because of, I think the profile of the, of the previous building was was rather high, um, and, and we think that this works out much better. Um, there are walkout basements uh, afforded with this. There are there's a stone wall. I mean, a, a landscape retaining wall on the north side of the of the building uh, near the wetlands um, that that uh, that will provide that. And, and we have the existing fence, but I, I don't think there would be any objection to taking that fence and extending it along the property line to provide an additional buffer to the to the abutter to the south. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bill. As we mentioned, that's an outreach um, with the neighbor regarding right. the, the yep. fencing appropriateness. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, the the density is it, it's it's well within what we what we require, well within what we deal with with city standards. That's why eight units were previously approved there. It's a you know it's a, it's over a two acre lot, um, you know three units an acre. Um, I think it's well within what's um, what's expected there. But okay, I get it. So, any further questions, comments? Right and. Any information we want them to bring back other than what's already been said? All right. We thank you. Great. Thank you. Was there a motion? Make a motion to continue. Second. Motion made with a second to continue. All those in favor say aye. 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 All aye. those opposed? None opposed? Okay. It's like I'm doing roll call on votes when we're continuing. I'm not doing roll call. Continuous. That's, yeah, Just that's fine. As a standard. No problem. Uh, our last public hearing for the evening is a site plan review for the, I think it's the Peterbilt store, 215 Crawford, 3,700 square foot expansion. Oh, Chris. I'm back. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Can't get rid of me that easily, sorry. Different hat, same hat. <laughs> Don't want to jinx it, but I think nice and simple. So let's. <laughs> All right, so uh, why don't we do this? Um, let's open up this one. Can you also open up the rendering as well? Uh, yeah. It should be in the uh, same Dropbox, sorry. Just make oh, sure. I, yeah, I saw it. This one. 
it makes life a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I appreciate these. These do make it easier. <clears throat> Quite honestly, when I look at them, I always go right to the site plan. I don't even see these till we get yeah, in the yeah. meeting. I don't know why, I just always skip over them, but. And, this, and yeah. your defense, I sent this over to Mike at about four o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, that's okay, so. that's okay. Um, oh, just changed. for the record, Chris Anderson with Handy Engineering here on behalf of the Pete store. Uh, for the addition to an existing structure at 215 Crawford Street. Uh, just to orientate the board here, we have Crawford Street that runs along the top of the page, and you have Blueberry Lane, if you will, that runs along the um, oh. page right. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, the property contains an existing structure that's utilized by the Pete store for a mixture of um, large vehicle repair and uh, parts and sales. Um, yes. Your boss has his hand raised. I don't know if you want me to. Is that from before? What? Is that Bill's hand from before? Before. I always put, I always usually lower them. Oh, anyway, okay. go ahead. Let's, you get, uh, I just want to give you a heads up. It'll be fine. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Where was I? Uh, so the, currently the property is a mixture of uh, pavement and old beat up pavement that's kind of reverted itself to regrind. Um, site currently pitches towards the, um, page or the uh, west southwestern corner of the site. Uh, the property is serviced by an existing septic system and tied into the municipal water system within um, Crawford Street. Um, it's the intent of the applicant to effectively redevelop the property in order to provide enhanced uh, vehicle movements within the property as well as storage capacity. Um, in addition, it's proposed to construct two um, building additions on the front and the back of the building. Um, relative to Crawford Street, uh, that'll total approximately 3,500 square feet. Uh, this is uh, intended to be part of a general redevelopment of the actual building. Uh, the entire building inside is gonna be reconfigured and readdressed in order to provide additional um, retail space as well as office space, and also improve upon the ability for this uh, facility to repair vehicles, if you will. I don't know if anyone wanted, while he's talking about, that's the new front. I building. know it looks it looks good. Yeah, and then there will be additional um, um, a couple extra uh, new overhead doors with other doors being either sealed or reconfigured in order to service the facility as well. Have you decided on the color? I just said painted. I'm gonna go with red, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like that's their color. I would think. <laughs> um, so, as part of the overall site layout, we're proposing to provide 18 truck uh, storage spaces along the western property line. Um, Entrance into the site will be via Crawford Street primarily. Um, if anybody was to drive to the site right now, it's pretty much an open span of pavement. As part of the redesign of the site, we're actually gonna be restricting that entrance to enhance the uh, traffic flow coming off of Crawford Street, and also limiting that to as a one way in, if you will, so there's no cross traffic in that area. Um, so we're providing truck storage spaces along the left-hand side or the western side of the property. Um, Employee and customer parking will be provided primarily along the front of the building, um, immediately against Crawford Street. Um, the intent is that vehicle traffic from this area will continue in a one-way direction towards Blueberry Lane and ultimately exit onto Blueberry Lane. Um, in addition to that, uh, right now, as similar to Crawford Street, Blueberry Lane right now is just an expansive, open, paved area, um, and there's actually parking that's occurring within the right-of-way of Blueberry Lane. Uh, so it's the intent in, of the redesign of this to, again, constrict that down, remove the parking from the right-of-way of the road, and to allow for a much more defined traffic flow line, if you will, along at least the northerly portion of the site, as well as the southerly portion as we pull um, that existing curb line further north in order to restrict the movement in that as well. Um, and there'll be additional uh, employee parking spaces on the back side of the property. Um, by code, we're required to have, I believe, 27 spaces and we're providing a total of 30. So we're trying to co uh, cover the whole entire gambit there. Can I, can I ask a question? I, I, I wonder what they do. Like, obviously, I know what they sell, but is it, it's like they do repairs and customizations for trucks, so the trucks literally come from all over the place and bring their trucks there and they fix them? Correct. So okay. um, any large truck, um, semis uh, go in there, uh, construction vehicles, dump trucks of those sizes, anything that requires effectively heavy machinery, if you will. 
uh, gets repaired and replaced and worked on in this facility. So it's the um, <laughs> best way to think of it is, is a giant car dealership mm -hmm. repair facility, just bigger vehicles. Perfect. Uh, in addition to that, there will be also some additional trailer storage spaces located along the southerly property line. So the general intent of the loading or the storage areas has remained intact if we're just defining it a little bit better for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, stormwater, uh, we're actually reducing the overall impervious on the area, which uh, lends itself to an improvement over this existing stormwater condition. Um, as I stated earlier, everything kind of flows to a low point off locus. Uh, we're intending on directing a lot of the runoff into a swale structure that will be located along the southerly property line. That's this right here? Yes, that's it right there. And it ultimately gets into a large gravel area for velocity mitigation. Um, the site is located within a, a very sandy area, so infiltration is the intent behind this to slow the water down to get more time to get into the ground itself, just from a, a uh, natural perspective, if you will. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the sewer system, uh, it's our intent to abandon the existing septic system and provide a new sewer line system to uh, the municipal line at the intersection of Blueberry and Cobbler Lanes. Um, pretty much a six inch line will come from the building near Crawford Street and run down to Blueberry Lane, at which point will be increased to an eight inch to meet city standard. So uh, trying to get the, the existing property off of the septic system. Mm -hmm. Uh, and water and s the water f and fire suppression system will remain intact as is. Um, I, I have it on my phone. Thank you. Uh, additional amenities include uh, improved uh, landscaped areas. Uh, we're removing a lot of pavement and um, pl uh, replacing it with grass and landscaped areas. Um, there's a series of trees located along Crawford Street. Uh, it's the intent that those stay intact and remain in place. Uh, and we actually provide a few infill plantings between them in order to um, help break up the line of sight along the, um, along the actual right of way of Crawford Street. Um, in addition to that, we're proposing a few trees um, at the entryway along Crawford Street, as well as on the southerly side um, along Blueberry Lane, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, just to help improve the vicinity as much as humanly possible. It's uh, an industrial park with heavy industrial uses in the area. We're just trying to bring up the landscaping criteria a little bit, as well as additional landscape beds immediately in front of the building off that front entryway. Uh, we did receive a few comments from the DPW, uh, which um, are moderately minor in nature, uh, more relative to connection processes and stuff like that, uh, statements of fact. Um, but that's the general gist of the project. If there's any questions from the board, I'll be more than happy to answer them. I think it's great. I think it's gonna, the, the, the store is always, the building's always looks, looks well maintained. I think it's a good change. I, you're solving some site circulation issues and all for it. Yeah, I was surprised to see that it was previous septic system, so. <laughs> it's shocking how many uh, properties on Crawford Street are on septic. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. In that there's actually, in the sewer available, so yeah, take advantage of it. <laughs> Basis for that. Any other board members have any no, looks comments, great. questions? Nice project. Yes. I think great. it's very well needed, really. There's not a lot of places you can service some of these, you know, these big rigs. Oh. And that'll it'll definitely be a desirable location for sure. Is there any, uh, this is a public hearing, so is there anybody in the audience? The only person uh, remotely is Bill Hannigan, other okay. than Jeff and Nick. All right. I think Bill's for the project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is a yeah. Go ahead. I just like raising my hand. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> Didn't know that. <laughs> okay. That's it. I think I think Christopher did a great job. Yes, he did. I agree. Thank you, Bill. I concur with that. <laughs> Very thorough in your design. Just right. for the record, he's getting married in January. Ooh. Look, you actually, there was, there's well, a, congratulations. Thank you. Fantastic. We gotta get, we'll get all this stuff off the agenda by then, hopefully. Uh, yeah, there's actually <laughs> even arrows on the ground, like direction of flow and everything on the pavement. Like, mm -hmm. done, good. Yep, make a motion to close the public hearing. A motion's been made to close the hearing. Is there a second? Second. With I'll a, second. With the second. Oh, I'll give it, give it to Alec. Who got it? To Alec. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, All those opposed? Okay, now 
discussion. Are you, doing, are you gonna do roll call for this I'm vote? gonna do Kay. roll call for the vote. Make yes. a motion to approve the special permit for, hold on, bear with me for one second. Um, 215. 215 Crawford Street. I have no outst I have no conditions other than our standard permit conditions, as well as satisfaction of the DPW letter, and comments in the DPW letter. Yep. Second that motion. Motion has been made with a second. And we're going to take roll call. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say oppose. Amanda. Aye. Alin. Aye. Peter. Aye. Paul. Aye. Alex. Aye. Paula. Aye. Laura. Aye. Great. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Thank you very much. This Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I mixed your boss up for a raise, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mixed it up this time. It didn't go alphabetical. We have I other business. There was a request underneath other business 2020-9 to clarify terms of a special permit. Uh, why don't we do hers? Yeah. She's here yeah. alone. Yes. Um, can you pull it up, Paula? I can pull it up if you give me the permission to pull it up. But can you can see? Oh, you have it. All you got to do is sure. go to the bottom of the screen, click share my screen. Oh. Once you get it up, I'll show you. All right. Hold on. Polly or Polly, you have one of you have Bonnie's letter, right? Yeah, it's right. in this okay. pile of stuff somewhere. Did you did you put the letter somewhere? Yes. What? Her letter. No. This is about the project Nexus 76 Summer Crown Point. Hold on, it's got to be here somewhere. I think you family. held it. I probably do. Yes, right here. Yes, I got it right here. So this is um, Summer and Beacon. Um, I just like what. Uh, I don't know if you're on? here. You don't want me to read. September? Do you want to just? No, I don't need it. Okay. Just, just do me a favor. Just pull your microphone down. Okay. There you go. Hold on. And while she's pulling it up, if you want to just summarize what what you. Uh, we weren't clear. We, we got the latest plan that I guess has been approved, but we weren't sure from what the plan said. There was a picture of a fence on there, but we couldn't really tell from the plan where the fence was in relation to our house. We would like to be there to be a, a fence completely between our house and the 24 units. Um, if, if, it, if they were putting up one of that, that lovely, those lovely six condos, I would probably say, yeah, let's not, we don't need that. But it's, it's 24 units, and we really feel like we really need some, some actual separation between us and, and the, part of the building next door. Okay, I've got this one. It's not color. Maybe I should try to find the color one. We also got to make sure it's the revised plan that yeah it's the revised one that it's got rid of the park because because yeah, you yeah. remember when we first approved it there was a driveway back there right you told them so during the public meeting we said to them well what do you need the driveway for well they they said we needed to access the dumpster and he said well let's move the dumpster to the front of the building so it's not bugging you guys so they moved the dumpster to the front of the building on the summer street side and once the dumpster was gone there was no reason to have the parkings the driveway so we told them make a grass just get rid of it entirely put trees there and so once once Paula gets it up you'll I think see kind of what we were dealing with nice building elevation. I'm trying to find the colored ones oh there was the colored one Hold on a second that one easier to see there we go I got it up go to the bottom of the screen once you're um yeah so click click that button right there yep and then share screen and then pick that window whichever one has it double click on it there you go and now whatever you do there we go there we go let's see if I can zoom in Okay, maybe I can't. Thought I could zoom in. You can, the plus button on the top middle of the screen. Oh, I can't see it. Right next to the 26.4. go. You. I know there was some other image. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, there you go. So this was previously a driveway with the dumpster. We had to remove the dumpster and now it's going to be all grassed there's going to be a fence 
There is a fence at the end here. I'm not sure if that's your existing fence in the back. I think they're going to want to take that fence out. That wasn't that wasn't put up by us, but that's not a privacy fence. And it's I, not it's not in good shape. And then there's they're putting up a fence on the back over here. Mm -hmm. As well. So there's a fence to the building next door, but not to us. No. Well, I think it's going to screen you from Crown Point, though. It's screening you, right? I think that's the that's the reason why we had them put the fence there. It is for you. There's no one else is going to be back there. There's there's nothing back there anymore. There's no parking back there. There's no access back there. They were going to have like little tables and stuff, and they got rid of that. They had a it's seating a area behind your house there where that big tree is, and we told them to take that out because we didn't want to encourage people to hang out behind your property. I don't mind people hanging out over there. I mean, right now there's a parking lot. People go in and out of there all the time. I, mm -hmm. I think we just really rather have the fence on our side mm -hmm. blocking us from... So the idea, because I know we had a big discussion about that, but it was also about the fence and that uh, what plowing can do to the fence and that the arbor, at least the arborvitaes would even be taller than the fence because at most you can only put a six-foot fence. I don't know that you understand how difficult it's going to be to clear snow building. or plow on your 10-foot right-of-way if there's a fence there. You're going to destroy that fence. We don't, we don't, we, we snow blow. We don't have okay. a plow. Okay. The, the point to that is, so a fence is only going to be six feet. Those arborvitaes are going to start at four to six feet because that's usually what they start at. Right. And they're going to grow, what, a foot a year. So eventually they could be 30 feet high. I, I, I'm just, I, I trust, I, I mean, whatever you want, we can have them take out those arborvitaes. I'm telling you, long term, especially a couple years from now, you're going to wish you had those trees there and not a fence. Can fence isn't going to last. And even if it does, it's only six feet high. Can it you can't, do a, we, a city code doesn't allow a fence higher than six feet. Can you do a fence and as the arborvitaes yeah, grow? Yeah, so that the arborvitaes went And then take the, the fence out when the, the fence, arborvitaes grow the, up you know. and in? No, they won't take the fence out. <laughs> <laughs> well, so... I mean, it's, it, once you put in, like, a nice... You're not going to take well, the fence Well, it doesn't... Out. I mean, for now, she just wants you to block the... You know, she doesn't want to see any of it. And as, but as those trees grow... They grow up and then they grow into each other and they make like a beautiful wall of green tree and you're not gonna and then maybe the fence doesn't won't be necessary but I think right. especially initially we would really like to have the fence yeah I mean we so at this point just so you know at this point all we can do is ask because we've already written a decision and they've already signed it so the I mean we we I, is we can ask them and we can modify the permit. Um, I, I don't see a problem with it, and I don't think they'll necessarily have a problem with it. What they'll have to do is they'll have to put the fence right on your right-of-way. Then they'll have to move the arborvitaes back so that they're not right on top of each other. And then, you know, like I said, in the future, maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe. Oh, it'll be their fence, so. Right, the, right. this property, right. Yeah. Right, because, I mean, all of this work, even the right-of-way is on the, 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 the property for Summer and Beacon. Um, I mean, I suppose, Mike, if you just reach out to them and say the applicants requested, yep. can you put a fence a a after the right of way on your property in between the arborvitaes? Keep the arborvitaes, but put a fence along there. I mean, yeah, we can ask them. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I I have a feel. I would assume they're going to say yes. Of all the things that we've done so far, um, I just want to make sure that you know, like I said, it's. It, 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 that, that, that we're doing this the right way, but I, I don't. I don't have a problem with that. I, honestly, I, if you told, if you were at the hearing and you told us that, we would have changed it right then and there. Um, that, that's no problem at all. Um, it's just now we're at the pro, we're at the point now where yeah, we, well, I mean, we, we were emailing him about it and saying, hey, we really want a fence. So we just, I guess, we didn't know what the correct process was. I hear you. I, th my hope is they just say, yeah, no problem. They put a vinyl fence up. They put the trees up, and we're good to go from there. Um, we we don't do wood fences in the city for developers because they they get old, they rot, they look terrible. Yeah. So it would be a vinyl fence, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, so we'll we'll ask them, and we'll you know hopefully everything's nice and smooth. And you know I like I said I think once this is done, especially the the, the way that 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 area is. It, 
aside from the fact that it's not going to be open pavement for you anymore, it's still going to be like your side yard because it's the back of their building. I mean, aside from the, you put up that fence and the fence is more of a permanent separation, but, you know, whatever you want, whatever makes you, you know. I, I, we really would rather have a fence. Okay. We'll, we'll okay. convey it to them and go from there. Okay. Perfect. That's the building. All right. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Bonnie. Mike, I got a stack of stuff here. Don't let me forget that all the stuff you gave me that has to go with you in the file. Oh, Princeton Road, right? Yeah, Princeton Road in her letter. We'll sort it out. Okay. What do we got next? Hold on a second. I'm writing my note for what we just did. Quest. Oh. We Joel, have. Joel uh, um, Joel Caddy, special permit 2020 9, clarify terms of special permit and transfer. But there is well, no you know transfer. know more about that. Yeah, so, Joel. so Joel had contacted me at, um, three weeks ago, maybe, and said that he was at the property and he ran into someone from the building department, and I don't know what ended up happening, but it was brought up that, so if you guys remember, we had done, we had approved a, an, a, an apartment unit on what used to be Tr Traders of the Lost Arts or whatever it was, yep. the building Joel Caddy owns now across from SS. Um, part of the permit was that the basement, the lower level, which you get to down below on River Street, was to be used as storage for Once Upon a Tile, which he had always used as that, and it was gonna be mixed use. And um, when he sold Once Upon a Tile to the new, to the new owner, the, the storage main, stayed there. It, he, the part of the sale was that he could still store all the stuff at Once Upon a Tile downstairs, which was fine. The, the owner of Once Upon a Tile works with a contractor who does some work for him. Like if they do tile, he does prep work or he does a kitchen or whatever. They work together. He was storing some of his stuff there too. So Joel's concern was there's a permit condition that says, and I don't have it in front of me, it basically says it's to be storage for Once Upon a Tile. Here it is. And if it's anyone else to go in front of the planning board or to, 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 to be in keeping with the planning board decision. So Joel just wanted to make sure that he crossed his T's and dotted his I's that the planning board was okay with a different contractor basically doing the same thing but storing stuff in the same place as Once Upon a Tile. Um, so do you need to be specific as to who the contractor is and, or every time it changes? Or? Well, so Paula and I talked about this and Paula basically said that, and I don't disagree with her, that it's just, it's just an FYI. Like if the board yeah. takes issue with okay. it, then we then at that point we'd file a complaint but i think i'm perfectly fine with it i think there's no problem it's whatsoever the, ten the tenant didn't change it's still once upon a tile he's just letting someone else that is associate in the I same biz similar business use the space for the, and i don't know if this is the case but just to play devil's advocate what if the other guy's paying rent there too Doesn't i don't matter. know so all, Joel just wanted to be careful. He just wanted to make sure that he got everything done the right way. And I told him, I said, you know, we'll at least talk about it. So I think the gist is we can, I, we, we could say, we could take a vote today just saying we think it's in keeping with the permit decisions that, that, that exist. That way, if at any point anyone in City Hall ever has a problem with it, there's actually a, a, a note that says this current setup is okay. Which, which I'm perfectly fine doing, and if that's okay, I'll I'm just put that in I'm the form of motion. I'm fine with that. All right, I'll put that in the form of motion that, that the planning board determines that the, 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 current, the current lower level storage tenant and co-tenant or whatever it is, that it's... It, you can it, say it's not inconsistent, it's with, not inconsistent exactly. with number, number two. two of special of the, permits. Perfect. Yes. yes, second. Motion's made with a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Perfect. Um, I did take a couple pictures at Game On today. And um, Game On update. Let me stop sharing. <clears throat> I just put everything away.
Um, so Paul and I had a brief conversation about um, at some point in the future, we have to take up the conversation that Tom had. Um, Tom had started well, quite a few years ago now, it was almost two years ago I saw, um, with um, handling all the outstanding conditions that came on. There's still a couple things left. So I sent an email today to the police chief because his, his department was referenced in a few of them. Um, they're all generally minor with the one thing that we got to discuss is the new upper parking lot. Um, Which wasn't on that list, it's just a new item. Right. So what's gonna be the easiest way to open these, open with? Their, e their email? There we go, all right. So let's share my screen. All right. So, um, as most of you are aware, there's. Hold on, I gotta. Oh, jeez, oh crow. Most of you are aware there's. Um, so this is looking towards what was going to be a grass, the grass field uh, seven and eight, I think, or whatever it was, that run along Victoria Lane, parallel yep. to Victoria Lane. Um, on the right-hand side of this, there was a parking area that I have the permit in here somewhere. I don't remember exactly how big it is, but it's not as wide as I think what exists here. Um, this encompasses, I believe, some of the parking, what's gonna be the field, the, the field if it gets done. Uh, uh, but that but that being said, I, I, I don't think, based upon at least the regrind that's down, I don't think they're, they're necessarily using that far, far side. Um, but they are, they are parking on this regrind area. So this is, let me go back to the beginning here. So this is Game On buildings to my left. Victoria Lane is straight ahead. So you're parallel to the entry roadway that takes you up to the backfield. So there's a little hill there that's, that takes you to where I'm parked here facing um, the Victoria Lane properties. And I believe they've been using this as a parking area, which doesn't exist on the site plan, but anyway. Um, this is looking towards the Game On building, which is right here over this bulldozer here. Um, so this is where you come up on the back left corner here. You, you come up that way and then you drive up here, and I think they've been parking here. It was brought to our attention about a month ago, maybe, three weeks ago, that uh, John Savone was saying that, that they're seeing car lights in their backyard now, now that there's no leaves. I told Paul, I said, the one good thing is, I can't imagine that they're gonna have enough demand to use this space during the winter. This was all auxiliary parking for outdoor. So I hope that's not a concern anymore, but we were trying to brainstorm, if it is in the future, how do you solve that? The problem is, if you put a fence up here, for now it's fine, but there's supposed to be fields on the other side of that. So you're gonna have a field between the fences and the parking lot, that's kind of weird. Um, I simply mentioned that what if you just have the cars park into the bank and rather than facing the field and just face away from the subdivision and park in the opposite direction to minimize any. So this is, this is a closer area. shot. This is standing where those retaining wall blocks are, the stone blocks, which are what protect cars from driving off the side of that. It's a pretty big hill. It's probably 10 or 15 feet. Um, these, these are the Victoria Lane houses here. So you're basically maybe at second level or a little bit higher um, of this is John's house, this is Beth Romano's house and so on up the hill. Um, so just something that I guess we have to monitor. Um, nothing and, that I think we can. And we'll we, determine whether or not it needs another site plan if the parking is outside of the, oh, they're changed from the parking design for the fields. If they're using part of the fields, then it might require a new site field, uh, site. Plan. So I will say I will show you one particular one particularly odd thing that I found. But this is exploratory at this point. We just there was a, a like a, a concern made, and so we're just trying to get some information to figure out what needs what how to move forward. Mm. So one thing I found particularly interesting was um, the actual. So this is what the parking area is supposed to look like, right here, which is about, um, 
it looks like 20, 44 feet wide. There's 20, here's 24. So this whole area is supposed to be 44 feet wide. Obviously, those photos I showed you, they're closer to 200 feet wide, 150 feet wide. So they go down you know, over where, actually they probably go into this hill here and then down over where some of these fields are. So the, the way they are now, if they do continue to use it as parking, it is a violation of the special permit. It's not the way it was designed. The, the more interesting thing, and I don't know if you guys knew this, I never knew this, that when you get up to game on and the road splits, mm -hmm. you go right to the building and left, yep. Yep. that left hand road is not on the site plan. <laughs> See right here, it says Westminster Hill Road, which is, it actually follows the paper street but if you go through all of these pages, if you go through all of these pages, uh, which one was the best one? This is the best one. Uh, this is the topo. See how it shows a dotted line? It's, it, it's not actually there. The actual site access is to come in through the building and up this way and to, to go that way up to the, now, I think it's stupid. I think that road needs to be there. Otherwise it's really weird, but it's not actually on the site plan. It's not on any of the pages. I went through all of them, which I, again, I thought was really odd, but, um, but anyway, so. Is it though? Yeah, I, I mean, it, 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 in practicality, it has to exist. Otherwise, you have to wind through all these parking lots to get to that back field, yeah. which, is, which is where most people go. I can tell you that the, you know, 10 or 12 times I've been up there for an actual function or something, it's been to the upper fields for lacrosse or, you know, whatever, soccer or anything else, so. Um, so how do you actually access those fields? Because it looks like a very hairy left, try to have, do a left-hand turn there. Well, this, I mean, this exists. No, no, go further up. Where, right here? Nope, too far. That right, yeah, right that, there. That's not where it is. It's right here. So what, en what, it, what it looks like in real life is this road comes up like this and connects this way to this road. So this is, this is one straight line. And then from the end of this parking lot, it goes up and around like this. That, that, that's, not, that's not accurate the way it's on that plan. You, would, you get a better feel for it if you look at the plan while you're up there. Especially if you look at this parking area. This, matter of fact, this parking area isn't anything like that. It's much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. It's four spaces wide. They only have two spaces wide there. Well, the plan's gonna need to be revised anyhow in order to reflect what the additional parking We'll need an as yes. we'll need kind of an as built, you know, what is there now, especially like you said with that parking area. I mean, there's definitely someone needs to go through and show everything now with new surveying and whatever. You want to scooch up a little bit um, to the top? Yeah. So be, the parking area, I forget what those right here. threes. Are those five and six, five, six, and seven. Yeah. So there's so there's parking here now too, and this parking comes there. all the way around to here now. And if you go at the very end of that top field right there, and you, I didn't take my vehicle there, but you can walk it because there's <clears> been an area of, um, of earth removal and and tree clearing up there. Mm -hmm. So still on that property, but that's not shown on the original. Plan. I mean, this, th these parking areas are very different in real life. I mean, this one's this one's much wider than that. They cut into yeah. the hill, and it goes all the way down well, here. You can, it, you can, it triggers a site plan. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, at the very least, they should update this to show current conditions. At I mean, I think least. that's. I th there's so many differences. I, I, I well, think. Then there's also use of the lower fields for parking. That they converted to parking. Oh, you talking about the one when they were using this one temporarily? They're not using field two anymore, as far as I know. For parking? Yeah, no. And once they paved this, they'd solved that problem. The problem was a lot of this wasn't available. And then they had that issue where the buses were all taking up spaces. They've, I think they've mitigated a lot of that. When the buses drop off people, they go down to Money Tech. Um, but but, but the, the, the real life plan is significantly different than what this looks like. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it probably should, you know, probably should be revised at the very least to know what we're doing. So maybe, maybe send, you know, Pete a note and just say, you know, we, we, we were going over the plan. We noticed a lot of discrepancies between what's there today and what's on the plan, which isn't necessarily a problem, but we just need to know what we're doing and what you're planning for that parking area. Um, and I, I do think you should say to him, you shouldn't be using that parking area behind field nine and 10 until we figure out, you know, the, the cast off situation and, 
is it allowable and all that because it's not the way it's there now is not the way it is on this plan also even interimly if they are doing parking there to reverse the parking to not face the subdivision all right just face the hill <laughs> Right, turn in. Yeah, rather than you know, you're driving up to a, a movie theater to watch a field. You're driving in. You're looking at the hillside instead. Like I said, my my assumption is, between now and April, they're not going to need that space, whether they use it or not. So, like, do they have people like parking? Oh yeah. People. All right. Every time I've been up there, yeah. All right. It, when there's big events. Yeah. They have they have just kids that they hire to do it. Okay. So, yeah. I'm just trying to I mean, like, direct them that you, way, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't like, know if they still do, but happen, you know? I mean, so. when they build the fields, if it's an issue, I mean, I think, I mean, I, all I can think of it is a like a four foot fence, like the, um, of course, chain link, but with slats or something. And um, I don't know. Again, park just park in the other direction. Yeah. You know, it was surprising that that <laughs> that major event that caused everything to blow up last year. That was in February. I was looking at prior emails because I was looking at parking. Yeah. It actually happened in February when they had people parking all over Helen Creation. For the um, wrestling tournament. Yeah. 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 So we could. Well, I bet you the not, MIA is not going to use that facility again. Yeah. I, I think I was told as much. Yeah. All right. So there's, so right. there's that. Yep. So it's, it's just stuff we got to revisit. Yes, sir. So Paul did send an email over to the um, police uh, chief regarding their take on what the traffic situation is over there and if they're satisfied okay. with how it's being addressed. So we have our draft 2023 meeting schedule. Can we very quickly talk about 20, December 2022? I'm, I oh. don't, definitely don't mind and I don't even want to talk about changing the date, but just so you know, there's a pretty good chance I won't be here. However, I might be able to do virtually. Okay. We're, we've been planning a vacation, and I think we're going the day after Christmas. So, are you in within uh, range? Or? Yeah, I mean it's it's going to be New England somewhere. We're not we're not going somewhere far, but I mean, also whether I'm available to be here virtually is a different question. So, um, will but, others, will but I, I mean, obviously, you guys know. know Board members drill. be av yeah. available on the twenty seventh. I mean, you can't move it the week before because three days before no. Christmas is even worse. Yeah, yeah I can. <laughs> no, I, I'm that. fine after. Yeah. <laughs> and then it if all you depends move it any, what new stuff's coming on. If you move it any sooner, then it just <laughs> causes problems. So we don't need to talk about that. I just want to let you know there's a chance I won't be here, but you guys have already heard my comments about. We've got a few continued items, so hopefully we'll be able to do something with those yeah it's like yeah. this meeting yeah, all gonna, over again <laughs> i know <laughs> but hopefully we've got a better handle on them so it'll go a little smoother Next time. Maybe. well it's on my mind mike um did you get a revised plan for ivor johnson yet we no have, they are coming in um i, I know ETF, first, the etdf right? that's why i asked development yeah if they send something before and send it to me because yeah, i'm coming sure. to that meeting i'd like to review it beforehand yeah. so i'm back to our and back to our schedule Oh, we like to mention Laura isn't going to read um, her, her term expires on January 1st of 2023 and she's um, opting not to continue. So we'll be down. Uh, we'll be down one member. Well, that is point Tracy going to um, step in? It's, she's been made the offer, so she's considering it at that. But if that being said, whichever occurs, we'll either have a full board member um, or associate position to fill. So if there's anybody out there, anybody out in the audience, please um, uh, submit your resume. Uh, unless Nick Erickson's Letter of interest. interested. He's the only one on that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a de facto like yeah, you're, you're member. Nick's already. Board member anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Board member in spirit. We appreciate that. Paul, do you I don't see live in Fitchburg, so I'm not sure I qualify. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. State. I appreciate it. <laughs> Do you see Alex? Lisa got, a, I kind of lost the, is, like is he still? Alex. Yes. He's still yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, he's still here. Are you, you are you, you want in again? Interested in staying on the board, Alex? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. Thank you. Mike was, I asked Mike because he said you and I an email and I don't think we heard back from you. So I just wanted to make sure. I'll, I'll tell him. Yeah, it's been office. a crazy week. <laughs> oh, no problem. No problem. 
that you're good for another five Thank years. you. And I want to thank Just Laura. Just kind of impressive when you think 2028. I yes. Think would be Laura. Right. I want to thank Laura for her service. Yes, very Me much. Me too, Laura. Oh, thank yeah. you all. Absolutely. It's a pleasure being around you, Laura. So we'll add to the December 27th agenda, going away party for Laura. Oh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> well, now you'll come back, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a pleasure. I've really enjoyed it. So thank you all. And then the 23 schedule kind of kept to the same. I mean, the fourth um, Tuesday of the month and that one CDBG hearing in February, which is the same day of the week, Thursday, that it February, was last didn't year. They, they always used to be January, yeah. didn't they? Used to Did I say February? January. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. January. That's okay. It, it is just January. Threw me off. We'll do it while you're still here. Um, did you, we, we checked to make sure there were no holidays in that. I didn't even see it, so. Holidays on the Sorry. fourth Tuesday of any of the months next year? Um, I'll double check, but I don't think so. I, that's the, that's the only thing I worry about is if, if there's any. It's, yeah, it's rare that you would have a, unless it was a weird, like, preliminary election day that mm. yeah. on a, September, on a maybe, yeah, the September election yeah. day. Um, anyway. So what else do we, and, and Mike, you're with us until? That's true. <laughs> until? <laughs> until? Uh, February. Is it February 1st or is it like? No, uh, later. I said the end of the first week. I told Tom the end of the first week of February. Oh, so, yeah, but that's so effectively for us, th though, it's the end of January. <laughs> so your last meeting's a January meeting. Your last I, did, meeting. I, I did, and not that there's anyone At on this, this point, public yes. meeting that has any input what, whatsoever, but I, I would encourage if any of the board members run into anyone within the city that, that we express as, as much urgency as we can about that Mike's replacement get hired as soon as possible because not only do they have to learn what Mike does, writing permits, but we also have a lot of stuff that happens at these planning board meetings that we can't teach as we go. So um, I, I've told the mayor a couple times now and, and, and everyone else who will listen that, that we need to post that job and we need to make sure that there's some overlap between Mike and the new person, especially now that Tom's not here. and. You know it, everything else that's that's going to happen in early 2023, which I anticipate to be a headache. Yeah, Mike, you're like a magician. We don't know yes. what you do. We don't. Know. <laughs> you know, for a long time, or still, my family never. So what do you do? Well, I don't even, <laughs> he makes never it out. He makes know. things happen. <laughs> but the I did see the job description. It will be coming out from HR soon. I'm told. So. I mean, that was always the plan, Paul. That yeah. There would be Well, but they're going to have the same problem they have with Tom's replacement, having a hard time finding people to fill the position. So that's the bigger issue. they need three or four. <laughs> right. That's the thing is it's just one, they're just hiring one person. But to be fair, there wasn't any overlap when I started. And, you know, you yeah. muddle through. Sometimes. Well, Dave was here when you started, though. I remember when you, you and Dave started. <laughs> but, but, but there was, there were, there was, there were, there was, yeah, there were, there were, there, there was coordination at that point between, you know, even Larry. I think Larry was, Larry was here yeah. then. Yeah, of course. There was, there was all sorts of coordination <laughs> between people. As a matter of fact, I remember board meetings back then, it feels like we had, we had at least two people at every meeting. Yeah, usually so. Dave would be there. Yeah, too. Back then. Um, just quick. Uh, I think I included this, not in the meeting packet, but in an email to the group, which was from the, um, something that the assessor's office um, put together, and Mary Jo yes. um, pointed out, hey, did you notice all this, his documentation of all the revenue that's coming in from the various cannabis um, businesses in town? Well, those are, that's tax revenue, so that's yeah. just it's taxable based upon their improvements to the real estate, but yeah. Right. Yeah, it's big, yeah. It's, it, I, people often forget too that all the renovations they did really increased the the value of those buildings, yeah. which in turn increased how much they pay, they, which is that much less than residents pay. So that 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 is a big thing. And the other cannabis related thing I'd like to mention: um, member of Rev Clinics, One Oak Hill Road, and their odor management plan. But we do have a copy of that. I'll send that under separate cover to the whole group, so you can see they list the. Um, engineering and building improvements that they're planning to do. I still do get a nose for it. Well, Less I was asking so. for the deadline date of implement, and the next thing they submitted a plan, but I wanted to know the implementation date. Okay. That's what they didn't have on there. They submitted a plan for to help at adding to mitigate the odor issue, nuisance, but there is no when it's going to occur. 
No, that's not good. No. So we got to like, you know, that almost to the finish line, but <laughs> so the building commission has to put some pressure on them? Um, actually, is what nuisance is the Board of Health, but with the permit condition, um, they were to submit a plan, which they did. However, uh, it's like, when, well, when is it going to like submit you the have plan? To implement have you already implemented it? it. Yeah. <laughs> or when are you going right. to start it? Yeah. Correct. It's not just we satisfied it by submitting a plan that we're not going to implement. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed Ethos changed their name the other day to, uh, well, I guess it was an official name to from Ethos clinics to like ethos America or something like that they changed they changed their letterhead it came up actually came up on Facebook because I I oh. like their page and I just it, it looked different when I saw it so it, it's one of several locations that they have around the country yeah and something else on other business so it's not um, here but just FYI is there is going to be a uh, public hearing by mass DOT regarding Thank the you. bridge Yes, on Thursday, December 15th, that was included in the meeting yes. packet. It's a virtual meeting. Virtual meeting. There's uh, a, a PowerPoint or slideshow that goes along with that, which was pretty interesting because how are they going to coordinate, you know, keeping one lane open while it's being constructed? Um, there's some improvements or changes to the alignment of Boulder Drive. Uh, behind here. I, that was going to be my main question. I'm, not, I'm like, why? Why are they making it into like a little, what's the point of making, of curving it? It's almost, I, I don't understand. Don't That's going to be my question. I can speak to that a little bit. <laughs> Great. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. you, you <laughs> so, so the way that DOT is going to fix this bridge is they're going to construct a new abutment in front of the old abutment on Boulder Drive. So that's going to necessitate that Boulder Drive itself gets kind of rerouted around the new abutment to make room for the work. So we plan for this as part of the main Boulder two-way conversion project. Um, yep. That's why the concrete and granite sidewalks stop at a certain point and transition to asphalt, because we anticipated that Mass DOT would come in and kind of rip those up as part of the project. Uh, we're planning to ask them to replace those with granite and concrete to match existing though. Okay. It just on the, on the um, I was going to say on the rendering it just looked very curvy. I'm like, who's going to stick to that? <laughs> that short distance. <laughs> so. So Nick, does it revert back to the current configuration after, or is, is it so permanent? After it'll be it'll be permanent because the new abutment will be constructed, basically like sticking out into Boulder Drive three or four feet beyond the existing abutment. So that, that whole lane, sidewalk configuration, everything needs to kind of shift over oh. a few feet to accommodate that. Okay. Yeah, that, that. So that's, that's something we've worked with DOT on prior to the main Boulder design. Um, so if you look at the existing right of way prior to that project and then what uh, was constructed post that project, you see that the lane shifted a couple of feet to try to begin to accommodate that. And then as soon as DOT goes in there and starts to reconstruct things, it'll shift a little bit more beyond that. Because I was, I, I was, didn't really, excuse me, I can't even speak here. Um, whether or not that was before Boulder Drive reconfiguration, whether it still applied um, scenario, but apparently it was accommodated already for it. So that's good. For the most part, I mean, Mass DOT's design was very, very, very preliminary when we designed the main Boulder to a conversion project. So we accommodated the, the proposed work the best that we could at the time. Uh, as that design progresses, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that things have changed a little bit. So uh, I don't know if that abutment might shift a little bit, maybe it'll put, push out a little bit more. Uh, and I know some water, sewer and drain uh, reconfiguration is going to happen in that, that footprint of the bridge too. So um, it'll be interesting to see how the mass DOT design lines up with what we originally anticipated for, you know, a, a year or two ago during the design of the main Boulder project. Mm. It, that will be. And I, I recall there was also some weight, uh, interest in the wayfinding as well. I know the, the bridge design, but also in the, the, the signage yeah, definitely, especially coming off of the Water Street Bridge onto Main Street. Um, it would be really helpful to have them incorporate signage to indicate 
which lane to be in if you want to stay straight on Main Street, which lane you want to be in if you want to go right onto Blossom Street. Uh, and it, I think it'll help facilitate the, the traffic flow through that intersection a little bit with some wayfinding signage. Yeah. So I guess more to come. Feel free mm -hmm. and to participate and Did watch. you ever, Mike, did you ever get any um, additional, if anyone, if people haven't been up there, this is uh, Canton Street, uh, Sene's project. Uh, it's looked like this for uh, six months now, five months now. Um, did, did you ever get, I know you, you said you were going to talk to him about getting the final drainage and all that stuff done. Any, any advancement on yeah, that? Yeah, and, and respond to Ty and Vaughn's comments from yeah. quite some time yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah he said ago. he was going to check into that, but that was a few months ago. I'll poke him again. Wait, uh, yeah. Also I, issue about recording permits. So. And when does this one expire? A date on so the argument can be made that he has started construction. I think that's why they did this, right? I thought it had to be substantial construction. Mm -hmm. That's just clearing. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know the answer to that question, Laura. I, I hear you. I, I, I don't know. I mean. But if the permit's not recorded, it's not effective. It's not valid anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And it's not? You, I haven't gone. I... We'd have to look into it further. Mm -hmm. I just we, want a general statement. It's like uh, we've got uh, with permits that are issued. Uh, there's a statement on the back of the permit just to reiterate to folks that it has to be recorded in order to be effective. So you have to wait till it's recorded with the clerk's office. Wait till the 20-day appeal period's passed, and then you have to file it in registry of deeds. Not until you file it in registry of deeds is the permit effective. So you should be able to pull a building permit or anything till that occurs. I need to get, get, need them, to get some right like political science <laughs> state to come to in that. and go through all the existing. So then we got people looking for extensions whether, and they never even when, when they were approved, yeah. whether violent. they happened, whether they're still viable, whether they're still open and viable, and because we have, I mean, there's got to be so many permits that. We do have a pretty good handle on the ones that have been recorded because we've been kind of keeping track with the book and page in a spreadsheet. How often do things get recorded, though? Because it seems like we've had this conversation a lot. More often than not, but to, to a conversation earlier today um, to talk about instituting the separate fee that includes the recording fee in addition to the application fee. I think that's that the way, thing to do. The, the city... Well, People other than me, but uh, eventually, but <laughs> we'll be taking the design decision and and recording and making sure it gets recorded at the registry of deeds. So you just send us a separate check made, made payable to North Worcester County Registry of Deeds for 105 bucks. That's the recording fee. Mm -hmm. But since that's a fee, did, I believe council that needs has to approve it. right. I'll talk to Councilor Zerla at some point, and it, it, I think it's the smartest way to do it. That way you guarantee every permit gets recorded. Um, I, I'm sure some of the board members don't know, but lately we've had quite a few where we found out they just never got recorded. As so. you're aware, even with some of those cannabis extensions, it's like, well, unless you recorded the first one, it's not effective. That's like Joel Caddy's <laughs> thing. I mean, one. Joel, who... I told Paula, she's like, she said, well, he's a counsel. I said, yeah, that's my point, that if even he doesn't know that he has to record it, then I understand that people that, especially like Joe Schmo building a single family, and they never record it, I mean, that's, that's a problem. Yeah, so. I mean, well, if there's nobody to tell you. And yeah. like, it, I mean, it's written on the permit, but I think people don't the, read it. Says it, it. On the application. So. It's written on the permit and on the cover letter oh. that is sent along. So it should permit. have, we were discussing, you know, it, in the future, Community Development Office, whoever, or clerk's office, about general instructions of how you how do you file it in the registry? <laughs> yeah. How do you file something? Here you go. Make sure you do this. Or like, like when you issue the decision, does that now go get this recorded? Like, there's a statement on the bottom that it's says. It's on it. Know. Okay. Well, what? Come on. <laughs> I, I again, I 100% agree. And but, it's the how. But it happens you know, so often that you you think people just they, they get it and they're like okay and they put it in a drawer somewhere. Yeah. And that's really the end of it. So. So, onto that. So there's always room for improvement. Yeah. <laughs> we're just like you know if we're finding out about these types of things, it's what what procedures can we put in place or tools or <laughs> guidance or something that could be more helpful. That product. So we have minutes.
from October 25th. I had no changes. I just had a couple. Okay. I can hand them. Okay. Very general, just administrative. Bottom of page one, it just said public comment, none, but there is no public comment because it's a minor site plan. There just wasn't any. I just struck that. It was okay. tough stuff. <laughs> there, was, there was no public comment. We didn't ask for public comment. So. <laughs> Well, then there was no public comment. <laughs> yeah, so there was no public comment. <laughs> we didn't on that one. So I'm just going to like, that. Oh, it was great. Um, page five, site plan review for the GFI warehouse. It was just um, Chris Anderson, Hannigan Engineering, Engineering. It was just some second engineering as well. Page six. Page six, second bullet. Project landscaping and signage shall not interfere with acceptable site distances. I think it says a site driveways. I think you meant at site driveways. Mm -hmm. um, I can't even remember writing here. What did I say? Oh, because this is the big um, GFI project. Just. There is a general statement of satisfactorily addressed comments from Ty and Bond's peer review study. We're going to just spell some of those out in the actual decision because some of the, one of them in there was about um, a target for the traffic to redo a traffic study based upon a change in the traffic after a year or so up there. I think it's not that's just review within a year, it's things like that. I think that's what the bullet one is with the question mark, look into potential improvements at an intersection of airport and Bemis. I think when we were talking about that, we were talking about looking at signalization, um, the timing of the signalization. I think that's all tied into that same condition. But you can spell it out if you want. Yeah, so I'm just saying, there's a, I know we have satisfactory here, but there's a couple. I just want to say when we do the dis decision, we're going to spell them, some of them out. Do you have these jokes, uh, notes jotted down? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to so hand it over to you. <laughs> that's a plan. And then the, what's the last one? Oh, other business on the new view. It was, which they did anyway, but um, we told them about the waiver. They'll need a waiver for the 2,500 square foot per unit, but they also um, need a parking waiver. Oh, speaking of which, I forgot to bring it up, but I looked it up. The smart growth parking ordinance, it, it, I think what you're referring to is the parking ratio table that we had talked about when we did the smart growth, the smart growth accepts the parking ordinance as written in our zoning ordinance. So basically, whatever parking is required in that smart growth district in our, par in our zoning ordinance is what's required for parking. I, I looked it up, it's in the zoning bylaw. There's something else though, but let's finish this. Yes. So that's all I had. Make a motion to approve as amended. Motion made. Motion made. Second. And a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, so I'll hand those over. But Mike, we got to make sure all the, all the minutes get posted to the web <laughs> before you leave. <laughs> Because we get, we okay. have like a bunch of missing ones. Well, so it's sent down to the clerk's office, so usually they take care of. It's not on that agenda center, right? That's correct. They're missing from the agenda center, so I'm looking there, and the minutes are missing. Okay. So because we need. That's just a conversation um, between us and the. Uh, okay, if you could office. have that, because I'm I'm trying to go back to that to re to look at some of um the decisions to say who voted, who was <laughs> there, and it's kind of, it's a. Yeah, we lie on them for that. And then, yeah, once you're not here, there's, there's, there's no one to help go find them. <laughs> and which are the Hopefully real ones or yeah. the amended ones? Or I'm going to try and look for that, that email. I, I think it was an email um, that I, I, don't, I don't think it was you, Mike, right? Tom put together with the list of all the developments and the ratio that they had of spaces to units. That was a Tom thing. Yeah, so we got. I think hopefully it, it was an email. Hopefully I have it. I swear it was for North. I thought it was for North Street and another project where we had it was less than one and it was a percentage. So what you thinking? I feel of, like what I am exactly, I thinking of? What am I, I know thinking exactly of? what you're thinking of. What we did when we did North Street <laughs> and we density? did 155 Main, we had 
Tom had put together a list of all the projects we approved and the ratio of spaces, parking spaces to units. Okay. So it was, you know, 1.37 for River Street and 0 0.92 for Harper Furniture and whatever. And we had that whole list. And there might have been a couple that were sub one, but almost all of them were one and above. And you could actually see, I, I remember from early, the, the later the projects are, like River Street, the closer they were to one and a half per per unit, and then we slowly started trickling down as we realized that in order for stuff to happen downtown, it has to be less. Uh, Harper's one-to-one. -one. Um, 155 Main, I, I'd have to check, but I think it was like 0.9 okay. or something like that. But I gotta see, if he didn't email it, I don't have it, but I think he emailed it at some point, and if he did, I definitely have it. So, but I gotta so, search yeah, through Yeah, so that was just 30, trying, I'm just emails. checking. So, like, is there a potential to promise all the spots in the garages away? Like, well, that, that's exactly my point with yeah. Mark, is it's, it's, it's all fine and good to, to say that you have those spaces, as long as someone's keeping track that those spaces are in perpetuity. And like with Mart, Mart I, Mart's thought process, I'm pretty sure, is we'll do that, but you have to pay us for the spaces. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and, and that's why I brought that up with Mark. It's like I thought the intention always was in order to guarantee you have those spaces forever, which is the reason why this project is getting approved, they, however, need, to, they need to be dedicated. True, however, yeah. the, but they have been in operating for quite some time and they've only needed yeah. 22 out of it. So I can yeah. see also for oh, no, 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 a I, reduction in that too where they've already demonstrated they don't need Paul, that. Paul, I prefaced that conversation by saying 87 was a crazy <laughs> number. Yeah. So okay. I don't disagree with that at all. It's just, you know, it, it, and, I'm, and I think the city probably will write oh, them a letter that says we will guarantee you 35 spaces or whatever in perpetuity and pay for them as you need them. That's fine. As long as they have something in writing that says they're guaranteed. Yeah, I don't know space. whether or not they even have to pay for them. I'm not even getting into that. Just whatever they can say that's reserved yeah, that's, spaces. That's what, I, that's what I was saying. Because we also have this competing interest of everything downtown. You don't want to see just vacant spots being paid for no one's using either mm -hmm. because we need these parking spaces. <laughs> right. For events and other um, commercial yeah, activity. Yeah, other people are going to need to park in the garage too. Yes. Yeah. You know, when they're not being used. <laughs> Kind of stuff. See this whole like balance. <laughs> I mean, and, and let's say for the sake of argument, the FRA puts up a seven-story building mirroring what the Johnsonia was in the site that they own at the Johnsonia, and they need a hundred parking spaces. They're going to take them from that parking garage. So that's exactly why I say that. So anyway, another conversation altogether. Like that. Make a motion to adjourn. Motion to made with a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? With right. two minutes to, to see everyone. Nobody's Don't think I wasn't watching the time, Mike. I was